Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Kit and Krista podcast, episode nine. One away from episode 10. Oh, that'll be a fun milestone. That's exciting. Hopefully we've got something planned for that, do we? No. Oh, <laughs> better get on that. <laughs> We're recording this not on our usual day, so I'm a little thrown off. We're a little uh, thrown off. off. You have no. a vacation I'm going out week, of town. Which is nice. Um, but it's fine. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. Yeah. It's a little quieter, I think, on a Sunday. Okay. But, um... I don't know. Maybe Casting some, pod on a may, Sunday. What are they going to think of next? <laughs> pod. Maybe there's going to be some like huge news tomorrow. We, we caught some huge news today. We caught some We're huge gonna news We're going to talk about today, that. But yeah. then what if there's like a huge thing tomorrow? Oh my goodness. You better get ready to record from the car. Uh, get ready. Are you ready? Let me ask you a question. Yes. Since we're doing this on Sunday, do you get the Sunday scaries? Did you ever get that? I sometimes when see I people was, talking yeah. about that. When I was working um, for me? When I was working at Nintendo, I definitely got the Sunday scaries. Really? You know why? Because of me? Of course, because of no, not because of you. Oh. You're not that important, okay? Oh, I'm scared no. of you. You know why though? Okay. The here... fragile masculine illusion of myself has been shattered. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, okay, here is why though. This is a very specific reason because yeah. we were at Nintendo, is that Japan, oh, yeah. they, their, our Sunday is yeah. their Monday. So like around like 4 p.m. on a Sunday is when you start to get a lot of emails and like tasks and responses to things that you had, you had sent, you know, to Japan the week before. And it would make me really anxious. You didn't know what that was going to be. You don't know what some of those answers to your questions are going to be what you expect. You know, we yeah. send, we used to send tons, if not everything, to Japan for approval. Right. And sometimes they come back with something simple like, good job, go ahead. Sometimes it's like, oh, you just thrown this whole project. No. <laughs> There's no. But the worst one is like, let me ask you the 30. Yeah. It's like rapid fire questions, but not in a fun way. And I need to know by my Tuesday, which means you need to do it right now. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Because the time difference. So right. I would totally get but not no. anymore. Now I'm like, I feel great. Really uncovered some on sad Sunday. memories here. Oh man, I was like, I'm like deeply scarred. Oh, <laughs> we, we can get into that maybe uh, as we continue with this podcast. But there is layer, my, onion layers. My of, friendly banter became so much more. I'm making scared. conversation. Did you get some these scares? No, I didn't. no you no. were just like rest and rest yeah. and easy on a Sunday night. Um, but no, yeah, not not anymore. Now I now I feel great. Okay. Now I like quite look forward to Sunday nights because I'm like, oh, yay, we get to record the podcast on Monday. So I'm like excited. It's okay now. That's nice. My life is so much better. (laughs) Uh, What do we have going on today? Oh, man, we have tons of things. Okay, so I need to clear the air. Not Uh not like... Now I'm going to get it. Not about you again. Like Not not everything... Is this when you tell me you're a big fan? No, not everything is about you. Okay, first of all, like get that through your head. We need to clear up some potential confusion. I'm ready. About the differences between Ooh. the Kit and Krista podcast, which is what you're listening to right now. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. And the completely different thing, right. which is the Kit and Krista show. Now, I, I understand that some of you might have been thinking that these two things are the same. I'm doing this hand motion. I don't know why. They are not the same thing. So the podcast, are you going to help with this explanation? I'm here? listening to you explain it. The podcast yes. is, is what you're listening to now. It's very long, as you guys know. We if like to chat. If you're listening to this, you know. Yeah, yeah, if you're listening to this, you know. We tell the insider stories. We talk about games that we've been playing, industry news, like two hours. It's out on a set schedule if you're it's on Patreon. Out on Wednesdays for Patreon. Thursdays for everybody Thursdays else. Thursdays for everybody yes. else. By the way, follow us on Patreon. Yes. Um, the Kit and Krista show is completely different than the podcast. It is not a podcast highlight. No. It is not anything that is recorded here during the podcast. It's right. new content. And it's really Nintendo Minute is what it is. Let's Amen. Call it like it is, right? Mm-hmm. Amen on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> It is Nintendo Minute 2.0 because it's actually Nintendo Minute, but better. I'm going to say 3.0. Oh, 3.0. Yeah. <laughs> Version yeah. VER 3.0. Um, it's basically like what we were doing on Nintendo Minute. Let's plays, unboxings, vlogs, Us challenges. stuffing ourselves into a small t-shirt. Yeah, ridiculous pies in the things. Face. Yes. Pies in the face. Like the, the stuff that we had so much fun sharing with you guys, filming on Nintendo Minute that you have all watched and told us you like, 
is what the Kit and Krista right. show is. Yeah, we just had a hunch that maybe some people um, didn't know the difference because yeah. we would sometimes see comments of like, oh, well, the podcast is cool, but I wish you guys were doing stuff like Nintendo Minute. It's like, ah, excuse us, we, we are. are. <laughs> Please watch it. It's really yes. fun. So it's, it's a completely different thing than the podcast. It's very traditionally like, your typical Nintendo Minute video, which is about 10 to 15 yeah. minutes. You know, we do a lot of gameplay there. Right. We have a, f um, a few episodes already up now that I will link in this video that you can click through oh. to watch. Cards. Oh. Look at the cards. See, a podcast could be considered a show. I know. But the Kit and Krista podcast is not the Kit and Krista show. Yes. It's not the same. It's mutually exclusive. Yes. Do we're not making, cross the strings. We're making the motions again do for not. some reason. Yeah. Okay, so we hope that clears up some of the confusion. Um, and of course, we of course hope that you guys uh, watch both. <laughs> really. Yeah, Listen check it to all the out. podcast, check out the show. Um, yeah, we, we just, we love making this stuff. We have We're, Patreon exclusive content. Yes. These Q and A's are fantastic mm -hmm. and, and behind the scenes. Spicy. Very spicy Ooh, Q and A's. I'm burning up from the Ooh. spice. Handle it. Can't handle the spice. You gotta handle it. <laughs> Gotta, gotta Need some milk. Gotta, ha <laughs> <laughs> gotta handle that spice. Um, so yeah, we have Patreon exclusives for all of this early access for all of this. Um, so yeah, watch all the stuff, please. Thank you very much. Join us on Patreon. Right. Kit and Krista, or patreon.com slash Kit and Krista. Thank you very much. Speaking of the of Kit and Krista which. show. Yes. We, uh, again, we're off our schedule this week. We have already filmed the episode that's coming out. So we can yeah. talk a little bit about that. This is we're very, very excited. Very unique, this. very different. We got in the car. Yeah. Well, you know how we like to drive around. Right. That's one thing. We live that in we, California. We love so to do. We spend a lot of time in the car. <laughs> yeah. We were like, you know, we live in this area where there's all these gaming companies. You know, let's just go show up to some unannounced and we're going to come up with like the Kit and Krista official tier list of the offices yes, where these the places office are. Yes. buildings. Because so some we, are cool. Some are kind of cool, cool. Some, are, some are lame. Some are super lame. Yeah. So we ranked Nintendo, PlayStation, and EA. These are some big right. companies. Right. Big, big names in the gaming industry. Oh, yeah. Some, some of them have like, you know, like EA has their global headquarters here in the right. Bay Area. Right. So, yeah, we did a little reconnaissance for you guys. We definitely were not invited. Mm -hmm. and we definitely snuck into these places. Yeah. Um, but we're going to, yes, we're going to rank these on the official tier list and we came up with some fun like criteria for each of them, um, but it was it's cool. And weirdly, these companies are all very close to each other. Yeah, it was like it's like within it's like, like a, a two mile, a three mile. You could mile drive radius. to them all within twenty minutes, like a yeah. whole super circle. Yeah, it's very interesting. Right, but um, but yes, it was pretty fun, and uh, yeah, we're excited about this video. It's definitely a little bit different because we're like out of the studio right. and all that stuff. So um, we will be putting that up. Uh, later this week, mm -hmm. so hopefully you'll tune in. It's going to be on Friday for everybody, not on Patreon, and Thursday for our Patreon early yeah, access. Yeah, get it early on Patreon. Yes. I uh, also want to say thank you to everybody who submitted uh, their questions for Kameoka San, the yes! developer of Eglia have... and uh, Mother Three, yes. among other things. Uh, we are going through all of those now, and we're going to send them off. Yeah, we'll pick um, ten questions. You know, it's kind of a, you know he might take a little time to answer those, so mm -hmm. can't guarantee we'll have those back by next week. Yeah, but, but we'll keep you posted soon enough. Yeah, and yeah. of course the ten questions that we select are also the people that are going to get codes for right. Eglia Rebirth. So yeah, um, yeah, we're really excited, and, and we're just so excited that uh, that he's willing to to work with us and answer some of your questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Let's dig into dig in. this. So we have a great story for that a story. I was not a part of. We had to delete the Nintendo from the Nintendo story time because this actually has nothing to do with Nintendo. Right. This is me um, canoodling, not well, maybe not canoodling. Whoa. Uh, I didn't know about uh, that. <laughs> uh, my run-in with another huge game developer, uh, one Mr. Hideo Kojima. You might know him. During uh, my time at Konami. Ah. Um, and this is one of the, this is really one of the more memorable stories that I have from my time working at Konami. Okay. Um, I think you've told me like bits and pieces of yeah. this, but really not like the whole thing with all the details. Right. I know you've had interactions with, yeah. um, Kojima-san before, but, uh, yeah, I'm not really right, sure. Right, right. Like the depths of your relationship with him, so. Yeah, yeah. So this, um, I had to go back and look at. Like the timeline of when this happened. This mm. happened in 2006. So this okay. is a long time ago. This I couldn't is, yeah, believe it. Yeah, before I even started working in the gaming industry. Oh my goodness. So you're um, really old. 
before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> I was two. I was a zygote. <laughs> um, but so I, at Konami, I was the assistant manager of public relations. Okay. And there were two of us. So oh. there was me and my boss, who again became later both of, both our, of bosses our bosses. Yeah. Oh, so he Nintendo. was involved. He, he, well, oh. he actually wasn't, is the oh, interesting thing. Interesting. So we were covering everything that Konami was putting out. And at the time, Konami was, again, not the Konami of today, not the pachinko <laughs> not slot the machines, gyms. <laughs> not the gyms or the vitamins. They were like very concentrated on they the video had games. A lot of games yeah. that we put out. So, you know, the two of us were just like doing Busy our best. Busy all the time. Busy all the time. Yeah. And, you know, kind of like Nintendo, every developer's got their different quirks mm -hmm. um, and want to do things a little bit differently. Obviously, this was the heyday of Kojima Productions at Konami. Ah. And they were very, you know, they were like the golden child there. Yeah. Because they... So you definitely had to like coddle them and just put yeah. the priority on them. Pretty much stuff. every way, the ways that we worked with, you know, the other developers was completely different than what we did with right. Kojima. I'm sure it was a lot of like... It, it was a little bit of a, <laughs> of a Mr. Sakurai situation where they were making all the decisions of like, right. even marketing of like, here's how we're gonna yeah, do this. Yeah. You know, if you're gonna do a commercial. And they have such a specific like vision for yeah. how things work that you really don't have much control over too. Right. He is a true auteur. You know, that oh, I think yeah. that that term maybe gets overused a little bit in games, but he is. He really is. He though. has the vision, him, yeah. him and Mr. Sakurai. And it's so like crystal clear for yeah. him. And I just, it, I, I really commend someone that is so good at follow through with right. that kind of stuff. Right. You know? So there are a lot of similarities between Mr. Sakurai um, and Mr. Kojima. You know, yeah. They're absolute perfectionists. Right. Um, they demand a lot of the people they work with. So it's very, you know, high stress. Yeah, pressure um, situation. Working with them because you just don't want to let them down. Right, right. Sure, um, sure. So we were were planning for Tokyo Game Show 2006. Ooh, I've never been. Which I think maybe when Tokyo Game Show comes around this year, we can spend more time talking about what it's like to go to that show. Yeah. I would love to go to that show. It's super cool and different. Unfortunately, I think it's not as cool now as it was then. Right. It's kind of been a little bit watered down, but yeah. still very fun to go to. Um, so 2006, we're planning for Tokyo Game Show and we're kind of hearing what, you know, the lineup's going to be. Mm -hmm. And back then for Konami, Tokyo Game Show was very much like an E3-esque level uh, moment. In terms of announcements and... Yes. Yeah. Huge booth, um, big news, developers are there. It's like all hands on. We're, we're doing this thing. Okay. And it was going to be a big moment for Metal Gear Solid 4, which had been announced a little bit prior and we were kind of in the middle of, you know rolling out what that game was going to be. It was mm -hmm. like, all right, we're going to have this big, awesome new trailer that, you know, Mr. Kojima is going to edit himself. It's a huge moment for, right, for the game right. and He's going to do these crazy stage shows and blah, 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 blah. It's like, all right, so this is clearly like the focus of the show. Right. So we back in, you know, uh, where we were in the U.S., we're like, all right, so we got this big moment. There's a lot of U.S. press that go to um, Tokyo, Tokyo Game, game Show. Show. That's going to be our responsibility to sort of shepherd them around and yeah. make sure they're getting the access and the stuff that they need. And it's like, well, if we're going to have such a big Metal Gear moment, like it might be cool to try and do something a little bit extra mm -hmm. with, you know, maybe a big magazine and try and get like a cover. Yeah, or and do an exclusive or something. That's always it, like the, right. the go-to for something right. where... You know, you want to put something more, yeah. more effort yeah. into it. And, you know, now there's like Game Informer and... Probably nobody else. Yeah, I um, know, right? Before, back in the day, there were so many options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there were probably like a half dozen, like, really big gaming magazines yeah. back then. So we started, you know, talking to the people in Japan about, like, well, what might we be able to do? And they said, well, you know, we're really, like using everything we've got for Tokyo Game Show, but like, but you know, maybe, you know, if somebody wants to meet with Mr. Kojima and do like an interview after the show or at the show, we could probably do that. So it's like, yeah. all right. So it's like, so we don't have a ton to work with, mm -hmm. but and we you start... probably have like a super packed schedule too. Right, so again, so start cold calling. Oh, the cold well, calling. Well, it's not exactly cold calling because we knew these people. Yeah. But uh, we ended up with GamePro magazine. Oh, that's right. I remember them. Um, yeah. The, the fun factor, five out of five. Wow. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, they were like, yeah, that'd be cool. We, we, we will do a cover story on Metal Gear Solid 4 and cool. we'll really bank it around the this centerpiece right? of this interview that we'll right. do with Mr. Kojima. And like, we're already going. We'll extend our trip a little bit longer. Yeah, to make and time. And we'll do it, yeah. we'll do it, you know, the day or, or two after. So it feels like logistically it's working out. Like, that's like part of it that's always hard to is the logistics of yeah, yeah. doing that, especially in like a space where you don't know the language and you really don't totally. know like what's going on. Yeah. Too. And, and like Nintendo, we had people who their job over there was the international coordination. Right. So right. they were helping us to figure yeah. things out. There was also a guy at Kojima Productions who kind of 
took a lot of that on, even though he was on the development team. His name's Ryan Payton. Um, mm-hmm. He left and he he worked on Halo for a little while, and then he started his own studio, Camouflage. That's awesome. He is a great guy. Uh, but he was worked very hard. Um, Doing like all the jobs all at once. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. So between them, they helped us really line this up. And I was like, all right, um, the day after Tokyo Game Show, Game Pro is going to come to the Konami headquarters and they're going to do this hour long interview with Mr. Kojima. It's like, perfect. Awesome. Locked Fantastic. In. I was like, yeah, I'm going to spend another day in Japan. That's cool. Um, so, you know, we get there, the show goes, it's great. You know, we do what we need to do. Um, again, that show is nuts yeah i always just see remember seeing i've never been to that show but all the images you see are just people like shoulder to yeah. shoulder like you can't even move around it yeah. seems like I it's mean, so you crowded think, if you think like a pax is crowded like you don't anything. this is like double right that. and it's like the space is probably smaller yeah too. it's like you you literally have to push people out of the way to yeah. go anywhere. yeah that's so scary it's so yeah. crazy and a little scary yeah. yeah yeah so you know first part of the trip's going great tokyo game show we're done all right Great. And then, you know, the next day we're going to do this big interview. So um, that morning, you know, we meet up with the, the Game Pro folks, one of which is a name some people might know, Sid Schumann. Oh, my gosh. Who now works at Sony PlayStation. That's right. He, he kind of has like the equivalent of my old job at Nintendo where he's in charge of like, like social, social media and, and content, content and all yeah. that stuff. Oh, that's um, and, so funny. and he's a great guy, but he was at GamePro at the time, and he was one of the two editors. See, the industry is small. You kind of move around right. like this. Right. So, and um, Konami was in Rapungi Hills. Such which, a nice area. if you don't know, is a very swanky... It's like super prestigious. Right. Yeah. Kind of a new, newer construction. Yeah. The Pokemon company is there now. Great. Because they're, again, that's like these fancy developers. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> So, you know, we're in this cool part of town. Everything's yeah. feeling great. Yeah. We get checked in. We go up. Uh, we're like, an, we're like you know, an hour or so early. So it's like, all right, GamePro guys, we're going to park you in the meeting room that you're going to be. Yeah, set up Yeah, and you can go set up. Yeah. I'm going to go into my little, you know, cubicle and just, you know, knock out a few things be- to get ready for this um, interview. Right. And it's like, all right, 30 minutes before, like, there's some commotion. And I hear our international coordinator. It's like running Uh-oh. in my direction. Uh oh. It's like, Kito san, there's a problem. Uh oh. Like, oh. 30 minutes before? <laughs> yes. She Uh-oh. says, uh, Mr. Kojima had a meeting with the board this morning. It did not go well. <gasps> he's very upset. Oh no. He's going home and he's not going to do your interview. Ah, I'm like, oh, I ah. imagine the board meeting with the foot tapping guy. And yes. then Mr. Kojima is like, no, nah, no, nah, dude, we're not popping sake today. Yeah. See you later. Well, then I was the one foot tapping because I was freaked out because <laughs> it's like, okay. Now what? Uh, we, well, we got these guys who came, you know, who extended their trip on their own dime just for this. Uh-oh. We've got this big cover story writing on this. Yeah. And those things get planned months in advance. It's hard. Like, if something Especially falls through print. at the last second, yeah. you can't just, like, make it up. Yeah, it's like a different time yeah, with so print. It's, it's like, it truly is, like, impacting their business yeah. if they have a yeah. cover. Like, and also, like, the relationship can be very much. Absolutely. That's the other thing. Tatters, right? Right. So uh, that's very bad, <laughs> to put it in layman terms. <laughs> like, um, probably the worst thing that could happen, really. Yeah. That's pretty much the worst thing that and could again, happen. And again, we're 30 minutes from this interview so there's happening. like really no time to like have a plan b what was the plan b well so i, I just like took this one i was like hey you know we really need to make this work and i explained all those things of like the relationship yeah and, you know their, you come back you know their business we're not done oh my gosh i'm so on um, the edge of my seat and um she's like yes yes i understand um you've explained this very thoroughly i will go back and see what i can do Oh and she gosh. and she run, runs off. And again, I have no idea where she she's gonna, going. Like, call him at, and his, he's like in <laughs> bed because he's like not feeling good. Now. I don't know. I don't know if she's talking straight to him. I mean, he's got a lot of people around him. He's got the entourage. He's got his inner circle. Yeah. Um, I imagine him like like in his like dark bedroom, like yeah. with a tea. And it's he's like just in like, the office. Yeah. I can't be bothered. <laughs> I cannot. Please. His silk robe. Yeah, like in a, yeah. I really imagine this. Right. I hope he has one. I Embroidered know. with the Kojima Productions logo. Yeah, yeah. seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Sunglasses on inside yeah. in the dark. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, we're 30 minutes. I just sent this poor woman to try and salvage have the situation. Have you told the media people? Absolutely not. So they not. have no clue right now no, that there they're is... they're probably happily setting up their whatever. Yeah. They're probably 
high fiving each other. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so they have uh, no, no, no clue. Absolutely, I would point. not tell them this because like, all right, I'm going to try and fix don't this. panic. I'm going yes. to try and fix this. Do not panic. Yeah. And you know the clock is ticking, and like a lot of time passes. And it's like we're like five minutes before <gasps> go time, and and then and then that's me foot tapping like I've been like I'm in the shareholder meeting in Yakuza. You're like you're scared of shareholder. Yeah. You're like, going to be scared of me. <laughs> what's going on? What's going on? And then I'm more kind of, she runs back. She's oh like, my God, this poor woman. Kita san. She's out of breath. Yeah. And I'm like, tell me, what? <laughs> Spit it out, yeah. woman. <laughs> She's like, Mr. Kojima is still extremely upset, but he will do the interview. Oh. I'm like, oh my God. And it's like, and at that point, it's like, all right, whatever. I don't care. He's mad. I don't care. Yeah. We're going to do it. It might be a bad interview, yeah. but it, might, it doesn't it, matter. He it just might needs tank. to show up. He we just, just needs to we show up. We just need to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, show up in the silk robe. Yes. It's okay. You know, um, in the slippers, whatever. Yeah. So um, it's like, all right, we got to get our, we got to pull ourselves together. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Regroup. So, you know, I go slap myself to freshen up or something. <laughs> and I just, you know, walk. Did you look in the mirror and say, you got this. You got this. <laughs> you know, go in that mirror. It was like, who's ready to talk to Mr. Kojima? <laughs> <laughs> As if nothing had happened. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're so pumped. We're so ready, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, right on time, he's like, he's like, boom, comes through the door. He looks extremely mad, as you can tell. Oh, looks gosh. Really just like, looks a little flustered. He's like moving fast. He's just like. Kind of like wild-eyed a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he's, he's, you can tell. He, he's just not in a good mood. That meeting. I wish I could have been in that meeting. <laughs> you need to sit in on it? I don't, I'm not in the board meeting. Oh, the board meeting. No, not, You got to sit on the interview. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fortunately, there was a nice like icebreaker moment when he sat down all in a huff and they had like, this was still like the era of like Japanese gadgets. Like you remember like the mini disc player oh, people yeah, would get from Japan. Yeah. You they had like um, the little, what's that place called? Akihabara. Akihabara yeah. Yeah. They yeah. had some little gizmo. I think it was like a voice recorder thing. This was before like, this is pre like iPhone. Right. Um, they had, it was like, it was like this tiny little cube that was like a voice recorder that looked very like futuristic and cool. And, and for some reason he was very taken with this. He sat down and he's like, oh, and he was like examining <laughs> it's this like thing. It's like something where like a child gets yeah. like a shiny toy it's like ooh, right. shiny object yeah and it was like whatever but that totally like changed his outlook around this like little gizmo it was like ah <laughs> googly eyed i'm sure like yeah it's like, all right it's like a kid that throws a tantrum and you give him like a mcdonald's yeah. toy it's like all right like, this, this guy's on tilt this guy's a loose cannon i don't know but whatever we just need to get through this yes and the interview went fine like that that Whew. he was able to lock in after that the interview happened yeah everybody was happy we all went our separate ways I had a great afternoon in Japan after that, and I went home, and the story came out fine. Okay. Well, that's But, uh-oh. Really one of the more stressful 30 minutes. It could have gone had. the other way. Could've, like, he could have just yeah. been like, no. I could have just I mean, peeled out in that NSX and said, yeah. see you later. Exactly. Like, he has every power to be able to right. do that. Um, yeah. So I I never really worked with him super closely because yeah. it, again the, he's got this inner circle and you know yeah, he's got yeah, bigger, sure. much bigger, bigger things to figure yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that was really and 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 also the other thing is like our my boss our future boss he had left town because he oh. was like he was like oh yeah you got this you've been working on this so I'll see you later so it was really just me. It was like it was, I, there was nobody, nobody I could else. Help me! I couldn't. There was nobody to help. There was nobody me. there, no. except for the the, the poor, poor lady. PR coordinator lady <laughs> yeah. that was running the, the oh, three hundred yard dash yeah. for thirty yeah. minutes. So wow, these things happen in these jobs. You kind of got to roll with yeah. it, but yeah, sometimes mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's because it's based around actual human beings. Right. It's not like you're dealing with like a computer code or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's like people have bad days, and. You have to deal with people's moods sometimes, right, right, you know? Right. So, yeah, that's, that's interesting because it is, you know, usually, I think at Nintendo, the developers that we've had the privilege to work for are very humble and very, like, you know, they're, they're not um, as, like, celebrity-fied. Yeah. But I think Kojima-san is a little bit more, like, on the celebrity tier. Yeah, yeah. So, the personality certainly is, like, a little right, bit different. Right, 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 right. Um, but that's... yeah. That seems really stressful. I definitely have not gone through something like that, and I'm happy that I haven't because that sounds. Like we happen to have in our um, uh, questions segment a little bit later on a question about 
Kojima and Konami and how that relationship fell apart. So it just oh, has just yeah. so happened to be good timing that we're talking yeah. all about that yeah. uh, today. But yeah, that's, that's so interesting. That's the story. Uh, did you tell Sid afterwards what happened? Does he know? I've it? never told Sid. Maybe well, maybe Sid's Sid listening. is listening yeah. right now. He's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Maybe 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 Sid and Mr. Kojima are both separately listening to this. And Mr. Kojima is just cackling. Re- reminiscing. He's like, ha ha. I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> He's like, I should have just laughed. Yeah. <laughs> he still has a little cube. <laughs> it's, been like, it's been like 20 years. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love it. Oh my gosh, how crazy. Yes, these developer stories are some of my favorites. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know... Mr. Kojima personally at all. I've only like seen him from afar and just like definitely admired him. So it's interesting that you had this like very personal yet stressful story mm-hmm. about him. <laughs> all right. There we go. And happier. Uh, Maybe. And happier things. So we have Nintendo Switch Sports coming up soon. Very soon. And I actually think our next episode, we have a big story about Wii Sports Resort that we're going to be sharing. Yes. That's going to be a fun one. Um... But for our Never a Minute segment today, we're going to do something fun. We're getting yeah. ready for Nintendo Switch Sports. Mm-hmm. We are going to do our definitive ranking of the top eight games from both yeah. Wii, Sports Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort. And Wii Sports Resort. Which ha- Wii Sports Resort, really, we were looking this up. Yeah. Packed. Again. Really a packed Again, that's why experience. I was a pip disappointed mm. in Nintendo Switch yeah, Sports. Yeah, no, I get like, that. Gosh, Wii Sports Resort had so much. Yeah, yeah. So we have, we have already come up with All our right. top eight Yes. And we can, let's read those off now. Uh, Bowling, tennis, boxing, sword, play, weirdly named. Yes. Baseball, archery, basketball, and golf. Yes. And uh, we've done this on Nintendo Minute before where we basically will randomly see these top eight games. And then we'll pit them against each other with bracket style. Yes. Bracket style. With some criteria that we also. (laughs) Right. Came up with. So, so we're going to rank each one to five. Five is the highest. <gasps> okay. Uh, is it fun to do the motion of that sport? Yeah. Because these are all motion, all motion, motion based. Games. Yep. You know, was it popular? Did mm-hmm. people want to play this game? And then is it is it very fun to do multiplayer? Right. So this is our very scientific method. Very definitive yes. ranking, scientifically bracketed. In this Kirby you have, hat. You have a pen to keep track of all of this. I have a pen. I have a, a scientific Kirby beanie. That has please, please let me. That has we, the we need eight, to work together for this. The eight sports right. randomly in there. We're gonna we're do, gonna this, we're gonna do the seating now. Right now, as I keep track. Right. Are, you, are, are you ready? I'm ready. First poll is this is blank. Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Boxing. Boxing versus versus. Oh come on! Bowling. Uh-oh. The bees. All right, okay. next is sword play uh-huh. versus archery. Hmm. You seem to be paired together very interestingly. This did is you, always fun. Did you scam this to make the matchups you wanted? No, how could I possibly scam it? I don't know. It? It's like, oh, I put, the, I put the one in the freezer. That's Your, your, your hand will go to it because it's cold. I folded it into a specific yeah. shape. Golf. You made it into like origami. <laughs> <laughs> so golf and tennis. Oh, I like this Again, matches. these pairings could They're not very, be. So they that could be means, controversial. So that means the last two are basketball and... Baseball. Wow. Wow. This, Couldn't have worked out better. This is really amazing how these got paired up. That's the best with the random seating. It's yeah. like it always gets paired up in a really interesting way. Okay. Right. In round one. Yes. R1. Got to keep organized here. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go through these. Oh, and, and are we doing the criteria in three rounds as well? Yeah. Okay. Every so. every round we're doing all three. Oh, and all three never. Oh no. Oh. Are we gonna have three rounds? One. It should be three rounds. Right? Okay. Yeah. So then we'll do we'll do one criteria per, per round that's to what keep I think. it to keep it fresh. Yep. So the first is gonna be: Is it fun to, to do, do the, motion. the motion? Yes. All right. Um, boxing versus bowling. Boxing. Very fun. It is a fun motion. Yeah, and it's it's very like 
it's very involved motion. Yeah. Like it's not something like we were talking about last week, how the testers would just like flick the wrist yeah. and be able to, you know, do the motion. Like this one, you really do have to like kind of make an effort. I'm trying to think from the original Wii Sports, was this the only one that used the nunchuck? No, they, they, obviously they didn't all, oh. but that that adds to the immersion. Right, the two hands. The two hands. I'm going to give it a four. You can give it whatever you'd like. Um, I think I'm going to give it a five. Whoa. Okay. Because I actually really, I, I know you don't like boxing as much as me, but I actually loved boxing so much because of the motion. Okay. Do you like fitness boxing, the game? No, I hate that game. What's the difference? That game is lame. <laughs> oh, no. Do you want to do you want to fight me in a boxing match? No. Why Celebrity not? boxing? Yeah. Can we do that? Okay. No. So you give it a four. I'm gonna uh, give it a five. Okay. I'm saving my five for bowling, which does get the five. Oh, see, I I don't think that's that fun. Really? I, like it's okay, but that's when you can cheat it. You could totally sit down and not have to no, get up. You, and you can do the like the, 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 the wrist spin. twisting. Yeah, the spin's very good. But you can you can cheat that pretty easily. Like, you don't have to actually, like, stand and do the whole foot thing. Well, you can cheat all of these. Not boxing. Boxing's pretty hard well, what's to what's your cheat. score? All right. Four. You got to make this big, you got to be grandstanding. Well, then Four. we have a tie. We can't have a tie. You need, you're going to be the tiebreaker. So make it not a tie. I feel like I'm being coerced. You're giving it you a five? You can do whatever you want. You're giving it a five? You're manufacturing a tie, though, which is problematic for us. We don't have a tiebreaker. I'm going to give it a three, then. Oh my goodness. This upset, Ville, already. If you're gonna coerce me. Wii Sports Bowling is out in the first matchup? That's what happens when you co try to coerce me. Oh my gosh. This was a mistake. All right, <laughs> we should fine. have done the coin flip tiebreaker. We don't have a coin. We don't, have, we don't coin. have the coin. Sorry. I'm broke. I got nothing. Oh no. On Patreon, please. <laughs> I don't help have us. a penny in my pocket. Send Patreon. us a quarter. Uh, Patreon. Or something. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so bowling moves on. Yes. I mean, boxing moves on. That is. There's going to be some revenge later for that. Ha ha! Um, okay. Sword, Sword play. Sword play. See, that's a good one. Is it fun to do the motion? Pretty Again, fun. that's one where you really have to yeah. do what a real yeah. like fencing match or whatever is like. But it's matched up against archery. Again, I'm going to give... So fun. I'm going to give sword play a four and archery a five. I'm going to also give sword play a four and archery a five. The archery motion is really good. It is so good. You yeah. almost can feel the resistance as you right. i know that this doesn't exist because remember but th it feels like it. this was before zelda skyward sword which really right. used a very there's so many things in wii sports resort with the that motion gets used in reused. other things yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. amazing okay so archery moves on okay. okay golf and tennis yeah well we all know how this is gonna go uh i don't know if we do oh really <laughs> based on the way you're grading these Golf, I think it's is only okay. I think golf in general is like a slower motion. Yeah. Just like kind of and it kind of repetitive. Um so I'm gonna give it a three. Yeah, I'll give it the same. Really? For whatever reason, it's like you want more resistance or something when you're doing it, Or like it just doesn't feel like um like representative of the real sport yeah, like where like the different clubs feel different. Right. Golf is like the ultimate precision game, and it's like you don't feel like you're getting it. Yeah, you're, you're just playing swinging your arms around. It's like, wow. So, no. Ten is definitely a like high, like four. Um, I'm a, yeah, four. I wouldn't give it a five, though. I wouldn't give it a five, but definitely high because you yeah. do, you can like do the backhand. You yeah, can you're do, going both you, ways. You can go. You can, do, you can also do the spin shots and stuff like that a yeah. little bit. Yeah. And the serving is really fun in oh, tennis. Yeah. Okay. Did that convince you? Four. Well, I mean, it was going on anyway. Okay, so tennis moves so on. So tennis moves on. Basketball and baseball. Oh, these are kind of interesting. Um, hmm. So baseball had pitching and hitting. Right. Which was neat. Which is cool. Basketball, there were some different modes. Yeah. I really liked the sort of like three-point shootout. Yeah. That, though, is the one where my illusion was shattered the most when I saw the tester That's do it. That's right. That was, again, the one that you could just totally yeah. not, not do anything. Because I remember I was on a trip with somebody and we played we played that like in between Meetings, work, yeah. Like really seriously for several days. And then he was like, watch how, watch how I can do it. And it's like... Bzz, bzz, and it's bzz, every bzz. shot. And he every got shot. perfect. I was like, yeah. oh my, this is, this is terrible. Yeah. So I'm going to give the edge to baseball. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give that a four. I'm going to give basketball a three. Me too. I agree with that. Okay, so baseball moves on. Now you agree with me. 
because you're making sense for once. Duh. All right, so our next matchups are boxing, boxing and archery, okay. tennis and basketball, and the um, ranking uh, is around yeah. popularity. Yeah, like if you suggested to somebody at a party, hey, let's play this, are they going to want to do it? Too bad bowling didn't make it. Mad yet? In the, po the popularity round was first. If, bowling wins, if boxing wins this, I'm going to be... Pissed? Apoplectic. Do you want me to box you if boxing wins? I don't have a penny to my name, but I'm using a $10 word. Apoplectic. <laughs> I'm going to box you. <laughs> box you right now. Okay, so popularity. Second only to debate me. That's the great insult. <laughs> <laughs> box me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Boxing versus archery uh, and popularity. Well, They're both I, not super. Oh, I, I think boxing would actually win this. They would. Yeah, yeah. It, it would actually. So I'd give that a four and I'd give archery a, a three. A three, yeah. Uh, well, that was easy. <laughs> boxing in the final round. I'm going to be so mad. And, and then tennis, tennis and uh, well, baseball. Obviously tennis. obviously tennis. Tennis gets a yeah, five, five. And baseball. Maybe a... I'll give it a four. I was going to give it a I three. Mean, you can give it whatever you want. I'll give it a four. I'll right. give it a three. You give it a four. Is that the so. only double fives? Yeah. So far? I mean, ba bowling would have gotten a All five, right. obviously, in the po popularity right. so, round. So the final is boxing and tennis? Yes. Okay, I'm really glad there's a strong thing against... Uh, against boxing? Yeah. And the final round is multiplayer is it, fun. Is it fun to play in Ooh, multiplayer? Ooh, that's going to be close. Okay, let's really think about this. Both of them solid multiplayer I do not think bo boxing just devolves into like, eh, 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 like a slap fight. Maybe for you. I'm giving it a three. <gasps> I don't like it. But it's fun to box against somebody. Like it feels like, like you really have that yeah, like interaction if, if with you the other were playing, person. If you were playing with somebody who was actually gonna um, like do it seriously, AKA not you, it could be fun. What do you mean not me? Eh, 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 I don't eh, box eh. like that. I box very seriously. I've, never, I've actually never seen you do this. Well, you're going to get to Maybe. see it in a week. It's not in the game. Oh, shoot. <laughs> We're not going to see anything. Come on, Switch Sports. Yeah. Do me wrong. Do me dirty. So I'm like giving it. that a three. I, don't, I do not think that's fun. I think it's, a, it's it, really fun. I think if it was better implemented to, to not allow you to flail, it would be more fun. I'm going to give it a four because I do think it's fun. And I think I do box for Tennis weeks. gets a five. Tennis wins. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so fixated on boxing? Tennis. You just want to punch me. That's all it is. I like punching. This things. is your in to like punching me. It's not real punching. <clears throat> Remember how we were talking about boxing? Boom! <laughs> <laughs> you get sucker punched. Have you ever boxed for real? <laughs> no. Oh, I have. It's awesome. Here we go. Do you want to go with me to no, a boxing see, gym? Is, you're, I'm not falling for this trap. Do you want to go with me to a boxing gym and we can we can just like hash it out? Heavy bag. Heavy bag or speed bag? Speed bag. Can you do sure. that? Blah, 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 yeah. You can do that? Yeah, I've done it before. It's really hard. Oh my gosh. Do you know how to do that? You no, like you don't. Rocky, you just punch a side of beef. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like dragging like an ice cube. Right. Yeah. <laughs> down a tundra. Um, okay. All right. We need to move on before I get suckered into to something going, I don't want to get going suckered boxing into. With me? You don't want to? I, I feel, feel like that would be a good video. But somehow we arrived at probably the right answer. Somehow, yeah. yeah. Even Tennis. though uh, bowling had an upset, yeah. this is my favorite thing about these brackets: is you never know, and there's yeah. always something super popular that always gets yes. totally taken out right. in the first couple rounds. Um, but yeah, tennis is the top Wii Sports game, and obviously that game has carried through many a Wii Sports game. I can so live with that. there's got to be something yeah. there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we can look forward to playing that when uh, Switch Sports comes out. Wonderful! Yay! All right, moving on. Yes. You seem upset still. No, I'm on guard. I keep it, I'm keeping gonna... my hands up. That's good. That's how you're supposed to. Ball. Yeah, protect your face. I gotta protect my the money fast. maker. This is the money maker. Fast, fast. Even, fast though hands. even though I'm broke, this is my money maker. Fast hands. Stop, fast hands. Stop it. This isn't. We're not doing this. Right hook. We are talking Upper now Left. Okay, about the sorry. games we were playing. Fortunately, I am here to save this segment from just being your Elden Ring update. <laughs> okay? okay? I've been playing other stuff. You have not. I have, I really have not, but I have made some amazing progress. Really? In Elden Ring. Are we talking about Elden Ring first? Yes. Because this is the only thing I've played. Well, so well, let's let's remind the good people. Last week we were at our darkest moment of like we might have to stop playing this game. That was that and Stormvale Castle was probably 
two moments where I was like, I cannot do this. Like legit, I am not getting through this game. And it was okay at Stormville Castle because I was like, I just started playing, so whatever. If I don't get go, get through this, then yeah. I'll just move on with my life. Yeah. Yeah. But now I'm like, I'm like 80 hours. We're getting there. Game. Yeah. I'm like level 75. Great. You know, like I I have sunk a lot of time into it, so I was very discouraged last week when I just felt like I was so stuck. Mm. But, but the fortunes have changed, people. Oh boy. Oh. Tell big us. things have happened. Okay. Big, big, big updates. So we were both stuck on that boss. The, the tree, the whatever, draconic tree sentinel. sentinel. Yeah. I cheesed it hardcore. You did not. I didn't cheese anything. You were very, you are very good. Okay, so anyways, we left off where we were like, we can't do this. We have to, we have to leave and level up yeah. and figure out a different way. That, figure out a new way. That was the right decision. Yeah. So I looked up some places where I can do a little grinding. Yeah. That was very helpful. I, I was able to level up, you know, at least three or four levels. Uh, I did do that thing where you poison him and you just wait for him to like slowly perish. I respect it. Do you? I feel slowly perish. I felt like such like a cheese puff. Did it like, die of old age? <laughs> like all of us yeah. eventually just wither away into nothingness. Um, yeah, so I did that thing. I'm sorry I did it. I'm sure people That's fine. come at me and no, tell me that no, I'm... No, no, whatever. I'm a loser. You've got to do what, what it takes to get ahead in this game. That's right. So I did that thing where I snuck behind him. I released... Yeah. It's like you like farted on him or something. Just like... <laughs> the poison wins. The wind. poison wins. Yeah. And it took legit like 30 minutes to kill this guy with that with that uh, methodology. I did like... I was I had a control... You would be so pissed at me because, you know, you hate it when I like walk around with... Oh. games and try to do other you things. you fall down. I fall down and I also like, I like to multitask, but it's that doesn't work out very well. So I had PS5 controller in one like hand. like a fried chicken bucket or something? You're like, no. what were you doing? PS5, bu uh, PS5 <laughs> bucket. They should make that. PS5 drumstick. PS5 drumstick in one hand, controller in one hand. And then I was like, Tr doing chores. I like. I was like folding. I was folding laundry. I just a round of dishes. This is how you mess up and lose. 30 I like. I like. Was like cleaning my counters because yeah. you wait for the poison to do its thing and then you have to repoison him. Yeah. So I, I had to repoison him at least four or five times. Oh boy. In my crouched position, I was just, don't get up. Don't. I would. I would have move. messed it up. So, anyways, it worked. Got into the capital, and the capital is so much fun. Like, it's probably one of the f funnest dungeons so oh. far in the game. Like, it's wow. so different than Stormvale, where it was just, like, a nightmare, and yeah. I, want, I hated it. Like, this is so beautiful and so, like, open. There's so many... I mean, it's huge. That feels very Game of Thrones, that area. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Totally. With the dragon like the that's King's, sort of, like... King's Landing. King's Landing. Yeah. Where but you can like, see down to, like, the streets, mm -hmm. but you're up high on this hill. On there's the a big hill. castle. And then there's also, like, these ramparts. The dragon. Yeah. Like a you stone like, dragon. But you also, like, climb up the dragon yeah. and also the branches of the, the big tree. And, yeah, it just feels so grand. <laughs> Oh, oh. Your, your gesticulating got the best of you there. You dropped your papers, but I didn't drop mine. Continue. <laughs> um, and the enemies in there are very, like, easy to deal with. They're not, you know, they're not like, I don't feel like I'm dying at the same spot over and over yeah. again. I definitely feel like I'm able to, like, go to the next checkpoint you know, take out the enemies in that area. And even if I die there, I, I've already made it to the checkpoint, yeah. so it doesn't feel like right. I'm just starting over again um, and it's getting repetitive or anything like that. I got through Godric the Golden or whatever his face, the big gold guy with the, the hammer or the whatever. I, I, he's gone. Did that last night. Went up to the next boss in that area and working on that still. Did not. you Did you try it? Yeah, I tried a couple times. Okay. I'm able to pretty much get him down to about a quarter of his health. Mm. I think I need to switch up some of my range spells because I do have some that do more damage. And I, I, I did summon the helper, yeah, um, Melania, to help me. She's amazing, by the way. I, I think it's so cool that they like put her as a helper. Is that one of the? That's just game. like an AI helper that's there for you. Yeah. Oh, perfect. It's the, your. It's your. Who your is that? Your maiden. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry if I'm spoiling this for anybody. Oh, that's neat. Spoiler alert. Okay. Close your ears. Um, but basically, like, you know how she says, like, your duty was to take me to the base of the tree? So you're fu oh. you fulfilled your... You, you you hear her say that in the beginning of the capital. Yeah, yeah. So she helps you with this boss. Yeah. She's really cool. Her, her, like, abilities are, like, awesome. And it looks amazing. But you still died. 
still died. Okay. <laughs> she died and then I died. I was like, oh man. Yeah. Um, but I'm doing good. I think I can get yeah. through it tonight, you know? Okay. But yeah, I feel so good now. Like I've even, you know, playing through the castle, I've leveled up a couple times. Um, I was able to get more smithing stones. So now my weapons are much like properly leveled yeah. for this area. Yeah. Like feels good. I feel like I can, like I'm like re, I have my confidence is back. I'm like, I can do this. I can beat this game. <laughs> Let's go. I'm uh, Feel good. I'm right behind you, actually. I beat God... What's his name? Godfrey? Godfrey? Godric? No, it's Godfred, right? <laughs> Godfrey. Godfred the Golden. I, well, whatever. Bad guy. I the fought, king. I fought and beat him last night. Okay, good. And... How'd that go for you? It was fine. It was okay. Yeah, I, Second try for I me. I also had a co-op helper yeah. um, with me. It was maybe like you know four or five tries. Yeah, nothing, not bad. Nothing crazy. Not bad. His attacks are pretty like predictable. Yeah, and he doesn't. He didn't seem to have like sometimes these bosses have the crazy part two when you get halfway. So the next boss, the this, one that I'm on yeah. right now, has a part. All right, this one didn't seem to have it. Was fine. Yeah. This area is cool. I, I think it's it's really big though. Sometimes it's a little hard to know where to yeah, go. Yeah, I'm like always I'm exploring around a bit. Yeah, but um, they make it easy for you to explore because there's not a lot of enemies that just like come out of nowhere to. Mm. To like ambush you, yeah, which is yeah. or like mobs, like big right, mobs, right. which is really nice because yeah. you can freely like look yeah. around, which is yeah. great for this like beautiful area. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm back to feeling good too. I instead of poisoning that boss, I just powered up my weapon a whole lot. And, what plus is your weapon now? Um. Well, so so again, this is a different weapon. It's using the somber smithing stones, not oh, the regular smithing stones. Okay. So I don't think the level can be as high. I think I'm on. I got like somber stone. They're all numbered. Right. Six or seven. Okay. Oh, that's um, pretty high. And every time you apply one of those, the, the bump is pretty big. Oh. So like when I went back to the tree sentinel after doing those, I was like, oh, this is clearly making a difference. Oh, wow. Yeah, which was great. So every like time you hit him, it was like a massive difference. It was of... much bigger. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's great. that's significant. So yeah, again, I'm, I'm going on this trip. Um, tomorrow and i do back wanna, to the backbone i, I want to try and i, I am going to bring the backbone but i do not want to do that boss on the backbone so Why not? so tonight i'm going to i'm going to do try and do that boss oh oh well, i mean i'm sure you'll beat it tonight but like yeah. is it weird on a backbone to try to do that boss or um it's just not the full experience oh it's, you want to be like so, like immersed yeah, in the or it's like oh you don't want stuff. like oh the internet lagged out for a millisecond and, and i died, died and like yeah. now i'm mad okay. you, you don't want that, so. that that makes sense yeah it, it, it's it's better for like oh, i'm just cruising around this area or i'm exploring just exploring or, or, it, or like yeah. leveling up right a, bit a, or a real big boss like that i, I yeah. want to sit down and do it i know that. now i'm like what happens next i'm kind of curious oh my gosh what happens next i don't know oh I did watch a video about like the lore and I'm still confused, but I kind of know like a little bit more now. Did so, you get spoiled from that? No, it was just explaining the characters. Oh, like I was that, like, who are these So people? not like the story of the game. Right. It's like these characters. The backstory. Yeah. I like see. what, who the heck is Godric the Grafted? I don't know. Exactly. I was like, who, why is he grafted? <laughs> I gotta be honest. I also kind of don't care. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't really care either. I was just like about to go to bed. So, I was like, I might yeah. as well watch this. It was like, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Just to know who these Bosses I'm fighting right. are, I guess. Anyways, no, no more Elden Ring. No, no. You have played many I've got, more games. I've got three little quick ones. Yeah. Um, that well, I've, I've not yeah. been playing to the same extent as Elden Ring. Uh, we'll start with this one. So I had hinted at this game last episode. It's a very long name. Stranger of Paradise Final, Final Fantasy. Fantasy Origins. Oh, okay. So I, I did not get this game. I just played the demo. Mm -hmm. Um is because I, I was like, I don't think this is a game that I'm going to stick with long term, but I'm so curious from what people are saying that I just need to try it myself. Yeah. Um, this game is very bizarre. That's my verdict. Takeaway. Well, you um, said that it was like really weird because like fantasy, but you're in like a like a leather jacket or it's something. It's very much that. So, so this is based in the world of the original Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy One, One, yeah, which was an NES game and was just very like straightforward fantasy. Yeah. Um, but the, this the fantasy of Final Fantasy. Yeah, if you, this if has you will. the the layer of Tetsuya Nomura's Final Fantasy, okay. where the guy's in like you know a diesel shirt that's like <laughs> cut you know at a diagonal. Yeah, there's like a lot of got, belts and stuff. Right, yeah. right. But 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 sometimes they also put on like a suit of armor. Um, but even that looks a little edgy too. So it's like all right, there's an interesting like thematic thing happening here. Yeah, art styles mixing in together. And it's like. It's weird, but I also kind of respect it for being so like out there. Out there, yeah. There's also Why a not? there's a very strange scene, um, kind of where the title card shows up, where uh -huh. he's walking through this like field of wheat, 
during a sunset. Oh, wow, how dramatic. And a Frank Sinatra song is playing. Frank Sinatra's My Way is playing. Oh. <laughs> but it cuts out. The scene ends before the chorus even kicks in. So it's just like the verse of Frank Sinatra's My Way? And there's a way? giant thing that pops up. It's like, you cannot record this. Because I don't the know. Frank if, Sinatra people are going to be. I don't know if they're trying to get Frank Sinatra on the cheap and like, we'll only use the verse, not the chorus. In the 30 <laughs> and, second, and nobody like... will record it. But it's like, wow, that is That's something. a creative choice <laughs> that I just have to respect <laughs> because it's so weird. At least it wasn't Frank Sinatra's Moon River. <laughs> no. That's another one, yeah. <laughs> it's a great song, by the way. Great song. Um, the um, gameplay, so this is by Team Ninja. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Extremely like systems, deep systems. Oh, okay. that like it was a bit much to menu throw at you menu, in a demo, menu. and I was just yeah. I was like I'm I'm kind of bumbling my way through this, but right. it seems like it has a lot of depth to it. Okay, if you want that. So again, I, I am not going to be maybe you know maybe maybe some somewhere down the road when this is like ten dollars. If I need something to play, I'll revisit yeah. that. But I'm glad I glad you. I tried it because okay. I was just, I just had to think. I was like, what? Is this? Yeah, that's, that's good though. I mean, it made yeah. you ask yourself that question right. and at least check it out, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, next is a game called Slipstream. Yeah. Which is this is yeah this is um, one of these games where you know again it's it's deep on an eShop or a PlayStation Network mm -hmm. or a what have you, and I just yeah. happened to see a little hidden um, gem. Someone that we know um, on Twitter post a little video of that. I was like, oh, what is this? This looks cool. So I checked it out. Um, they actually sent me a code, actually, they saw. Oh, that's nice. That, that was very nice of them. Um, it's a kind of old-school arcade-style racing game mm -hmm. that seems to be very clearly influenced by OutRun, that old Sega game. Oh, okay. Which I think in the pantheon of old arcade games that you would see, like, little kids pretending they were driving. driving it without, was, like, up there. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, I'm turning the wheel. Look at me. Yeah. Wow. yeah. It's like at some pizza shops. Right. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Totally. Um, but it really like nails that aesthetic yeah. of the graphics. Like you posted like a little video of it yesterday yeah. and it definitely kind of had that feel. Yeah. And you can really like, you know, as you're driving on the road, there's always something like on the sides, whether yeah, it's that's trees like, fall, like flying towards or you. skyscrapers or a fence. And you really get that sense of motion. Well, they did a 3DS version of OutRun, which was really cool. Actually, that's not my favorite game, but that was a very cool just effect mm -hmm. of like, of like you're moving fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and this is kind of, you need to learn how to drift to really get through all of oh, these okay. things. And it seemed to be something I liked. It's like you're not just doing laps. It was very much like point to point. Mm -hmm. And it was very quick of like going from one environment to the next. So there's like a city, there was a beach, there was like a Italian villa. There was oh. like an, there was like a lot of these. So I was like, all right, there's some good variety here. Sound like Mario Kart. Um, the music is really cool. Yeah. It's like this very like... Synthy, but mo modern synthy. Yeah, that has that kind of um, feel to it. So again, I, I'd only played it for a little bit, but I thought that was very cool. Synth vibes to study too. A bit more aggressive than that <laughs> um, for my, you know, two hundred mile an hour drifts. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, um, and okay. The last one again. I, I I was just like kind of curious about this. Is Lego you Star a Wars physical copy the of the Skywalker game? Saga? So. This is a game when we were at Nintendo, they, we were hearing about this game for a long time and our third party yeah. people were always like, this is going to be big. This is going to be a big one. And it was I never was, clear when it was going to come out though. But it so. was also never clear. Like, why was this different from any other mm -hmm. Star Wars game? There's a million Lego Star Wars games. Yeah. Um, but again, I just, I just saw some clips of it online and I was like, oh, okay. I, I can see very clearly what yeah. they've changed. And it's like. You know, before it was like more of like a, almost like a diagonal top-down angle. This mm -hmm. is like very behind the shoulder. Yeah. And when you're doing shooting, it looks like a real like third-person shooter. Mm -hmm. um, but this is collecting. Like more like action-based. Right. Based, yeah. All nine of the main trilogy, the three trilogies of Star Wars. So there's a lot of content here. And it's, you know, like all these games, there's like a million different. Collectibles and Things to collect. Things. Yeah. And I, I do not fall into that trap. Yeah. The story mode, though. Could be kind of yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. Something I didn't love, though. What? Right when you boot up the game, it's like, hey, up on the eShop now, buy the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda skin. Oh. It's like, you just, just put that in the game. Are you going to upsell you right at the I'm beginning? Not, I'm not buying it. But I Baby refuse. Yoda. I don't care. I don't. He's so cute. There's no man. They should they should put Mandalorian in this, or they should... That would be a cool a next... skin is not the same as a character. Huh? 
Well, he's not in the game. Well, you can get him in the game. Oh, Wh whatever. Okay. Yeah, we're getting confused here. Um, that it's like, all right, they've made games of these movies before. I would love to have like The Mandalorian, um, uh, Clone Wars, mm -hmm. Star Wars Rebels. Let's do those. The oh, kind Rebels of, would be fun. The kind of newer wave. Yeah. I'm a little tired. I mean, I love I love Star Wars. You know me. I know. I love it. The old movies. You look so bored right now. I'm not bored. You I'm can't even thinking, hide it. I'm just thinking about the old <laughs> movies and how it's like, it's so outdated. It's so true. Well, it's not outdated, but they've just, it's always the thing that it's they come the back same. to. It's always the same. Yeah. And even and in the these, stories are like shaky at best. And even in these new stories, it's always like, oh, well, here, well, here we got Luke Skywalker. It's like, let's just move on to something else. Yeah. I just, I'm just ready to move on. Make so, it feel fresh again. Yeah. But, I think Disney did a good job of that with the new stuff and with like ser like series like The Mandalorian. It made it feel less well, they, like they, boring. Did they do a great job with those last three movies, which fell apart? No. They were okay. <sighs> Let's move on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but so um, these games do have like proper voice acting, which I don't recall there being in um, a Lego game. So they do kind of balance like hitting the big story beats and delivering those kind of true okay. to the source material, but also having like the wacky, zany like Lego, Lego part of it, <clears throat> Lego moments. So yeah, the funny parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, this is kind of like you know Kirby was our like palette cleanser from Elden Ring. Yeah. This is very much my new palette cleanser because really? it's easy. It's easy. It's breezy. I don't want a palette cleanser anymore. All I just right. want to go deep on this game. We have a podcast where we need to talk to people about games that we're playing. You'll be playing episode 999. Well, I'm, I'm going to beat this game. I'm still grinding it out on I'm Elden I'm going to beat this game. When? Give me a deadline. We're setting a deadline right I now. Can, I think I can do it in the when? next week. You! Oh I think goodness. I can do it. You had played one week of Horizon before Elden Ring came out. You're like, I'm going to finish this game before it comes <laughs> finish out. Finish this game. I'm going to finish this game before it comes well, out. Well, you're going to be rid of me for a week, so we're going to check in. Oh, thank God. You're going to take up so much of my time. I'm going to like, yeah. I have so much time now this week. Yeah. No um, excuses. We also were fun. invited to a preview event, our yes. first one, which was so much fun. Yes. We were like joking around like, wow, being on the other side of this is way better. <laughs> 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 Putting together a preview event is way harder. Listening to the quote, housekeeping. I know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> please remember the embargo is blah, yeah, blah, the blah. Embargo. Please, oh God, the embargo. Please, the foot, please use the footage that is provided. Everyone out there that wants to invite us to a preview event, just know that we understand <laughs> you and we, we, we see We've you. We've been there. And we will never, ever break an embargo because I have been there. We have been there. It hurts. Yes. Oh. So we understand. But anyways, thank you for inviting us. Yes. We um, went and saw an update for Bug Snacks and it yes. was actually really cool. Yeah, so there's um, some news on uh, Bug Snacks. That it, the base game is kind of an older game, but yeah. um, the game is coming to Switch and Xbox. Mm -hmm. And there's also a free update, which is what yeah, we, we saw. saw. Yeah. Had you played Bug Snacks before? I did. Yeah, when really? it first came out. Oh, I didn't know that. It was like very like reasonably priced. I remember. Well, it was free. That's you, right. That's right. You, it was free. It was, I was like, either it was like a dollar or something. It was like day one when PS5 came out. That was the free PSN game. That's right. So I think I, 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 think I got PSN yeah. and I got Bugsnax. So I also have it. I have not played it. So yeah. this was kind of my first introduction to yeah. the game. I played it a little bit. Not not like deeply, okay. obviously, but I did play it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this, this new update looks really good though. And you were surprised. You were like, I didn't realize this was like... Yeah. Like a first person. I didn't know what kind of, I, know, I knew it was like, all right, there's these like creatures and you're trying to like collect them or, mm -hmm. or round them up. But I didn't realize that it was a first person game. Yeah. And I didn't really realize like the way the characters are interconnected. Right. So there's like right. your characters and then there are the bug snacks. The actual bug snacks. Yeah. And they're more like, you know, humans versus like livestock almost. Right. I thought they were all just kind of one in the same. Right. So right. I had some bad info or we something. We have misconceptions to clear up. On this game, which I The owned. voice acting. They have yeah. like so much voice acting right. in that game, which is kind of incredible. Yeah. Like it's just like, there's like so much dialogue and so much like yeah. of that experience, which I was kind of surprised by for this game as yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, um, we, you know, we talk about like the quality of indie developers all the time, but I, I was really impressed. Yeah, I was impressed. like, I was like, wow, this game looks great. This game has a lot of, you know, you know like, you know, proper, you know, Production, like the, the voice, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, the production the, value is like super, everything. super high. So, um, yeah, I, I think this is a good, uh, it's a free update. Yeah. So it's yeah. a good push for me to uh, add that to my backlog. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's um, great that it's coming out on Switch too. So you can, you know, play that handheld yeah, and all that stuff. Because it yeah. is one of those games where maybe you don't want to like sit in front of your, 
your TV for long hours playing that game. I mean, maybe you do, but yeah, we, I, I preferred that game as a handheld game. So I think we did. Great. We did not see the Switch version. We, we should We should say yeah. I would be very eager to see it. There were a lot of questions um, about it. About it. Yeah. One thing I was a teeny bit sad about was somebody asked, like, "Are you having gyro aiming?" Yeah. And they were like, "Oh, we spent a little bit of time trying to get it, but we couldn't get it to feel right. So yeah. Yeah. not immediately. And you know, maybe if we have some free time, we'll do it later." Yeah. I was like, "Oh, that's such that's a, like one of the best things about Switch. It's a is nice the gyro aiming. It's a nice little thing if you can do it. But yeah. But they're very alas, busy. they're very busy. So they are." They yeah. Were busy. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're, we were we were excited to be part of that, and it was cool yeah. to see it see it before uh, before it comes out. Right. Right. Yeah. Onward, though. Okay. The big news do, on do, a do, Sunday do, morning. Do, 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 do. We woke up, and I was like, "Oh, so this so something's let's see. happened." This is news from Japan. Mm -hmm. There was a Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary live presentation. Stream. Yes. When did this actually happen? Was this like? I guess this would have been Japan's Sunday. I guess oh, if you hold on. Again, we are we are See, Kingdom the, Hearts noobs. So I'm like, yeah. what was this? Maybe this was time to the literal 20th the anniversary. Actual anniversary. We don't know. So please, please Japan's, don't come after us. Japan's so today is Japan's Monday. Now. Well, soon to be. Now it's like their middle of the night. The middle of the yeah. night. So it must have been their Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it was the exact date. Anyhow, Kingdom Hearts yeah. Four was announced. Woo! Wow. For all you Kingdom Hearts fans. Maybe this is the one. Do you guys think we this is both, the one? We both worked with probably one of the biggest, like I'd say in the top like 0.1% of, of Kingdom Hearts fans. fans ever. We Alexa. worked with her. I felt very happy for her. Yeah. That I, was my main takeaway. I thought away. about her immediately <laughs> yeah. as well. Her yeah. and uh, our other friend, Camille, who's a big oh, was she into it too? Kingdom Hearts Oh, fan. good. I was just like applauding yeah. for my Kingdom Hearts. Happy for them. Kingdom Hearts yeah. um, lovers there. But I also like every single time they announce a new Kingdom Hearts game, you know, I'm always like, should I play this one? Oh, because you have the Disney affinities. Yeah, I always imagine, like, would this be the one that will grab me? Or is this going to be the one that changes my mind and gets me into the series? This one did not have a lot of Disney I until the very gonna end. I was just going to say that. So I, I was like, okay, people are excited about yeah. this. I'm going to watch this trailer, see what the yeah, hubbub yeah. is about. And, of course, I watched the trailer, and it was like, so it was like the lowest <laughs> on Disney ever. Yeah. At the very end, you see uh, Donald Duck and Goofy, um, sort of doing their like kind of comedic yeah. break from this kind of it's, the the trailer was actually quite like dramatic right. anime, a little serious, mm -hmm. big boss boss battle, yeah. you know, with uh, with Sora, and it's like. Where, when is how is it Disney? Though? There was a Disney logo at the beginning. That's true. So yeah, so like, I don't know the the. Appeal for Kingdom Hearts to me truly is like the Disney partnership and I just like want to see it if there's a way for them to integrate it better or yeah. more like I don't know just like does it make it not feel like two separate things or just like an afterthought sometimes I wonder like I just want obviously know. this is a very successful series yeah Sometimes I wonder how Disney itself feels about how this has gone. Exactly. <laughs> like, I don't know if this is what we signed up for. Exactly. I, I think about it. And Disney is like one of those Nintendo-y kind of yeah. companies where they're very protective of their right. IP. Right. They're very, you know, they're very difficult traditionally to work with. So it's like, do they like that, that their yeah. like flagship characters are being used in this like kind of goofy afterthought kind of way? Right, it's like right. Japanese like anime yeah. kind of game? I don't know. Yeah, so... Just from the trailer, I was like a little disappointed in the non-Disney parts mm. of it. Um, but again, I was really happy for my fellow yeah. Kingdom Hearts friends that were excited. And I don't know, maybe when it when we see more of it, yeah. like, it'll change my mind or something. I did not play Kingdom Hearts, so all of the story stuff, which is apparently nonsense, I didn't understand. Yeah. Um, I Speaking thought like Elden Ring story is confusing. This is probably more confusing oh, than yeah. that. Yeah. I thought the trailer looked very nice. It did. With kind of this yeah. like... I could, was it the real world or they were like, this is blah, blah, blah. This is a different world. It's like a parallel. I, I don't know. Let's not get like, into that. I don't know. It's better not to. Yeah, it looked um, like it was just cool. like in Japan somewhere. It looked like, very realistic. Yeah, it looked very realistic. Yeah, yeah so. It's like just like living in um, an apartment. I don't think they had a lot of info on like platforms or nothing. release dates. No or, release dates, no platform, so nothing. who knows when yeah. this will come out. But. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Happy for you, Kingdom Hearts fans. Yeah. Fun to wake up on a Sunday morning or something like that. And then there was more game announcements that happened earlier yeah, in the week. Yeah, what's going on here? Remedy and Rockstar announced Max Payne 1 and 2 Remix. Okay, okay. Um, 
What, were you into Max Payne at all? I wasn't, but people love this game. So, like, should I get into it now? Would I like it? I don't know. So, again, I, I, I always look at Max Payne as primarily a PC game. Yeah. And that was, it, it did come out on PS2 and Xbox, and that was always, at that time, I was like, oh. Oh, this is my chance. I was kind of, like, always on the periphery of, like, should that be the next game I try or buy? Yeah. And I did eventually get it when it was, like, Greatest Hits, the first one. And? And I liked it. Okay. Um. You know, it's a very, like, just nonstop action game yeah. that relies super heavily on that bullet time. I don't know. They're mm. gonna. I feel like they're going to have to add something more to make it work today. Yeah, like a remake, too. Um, they're going to remake it. I but, guess. Um, yeah, in this, in this story we found, you know, they talk about it will be in line with a typical Remedy AAA game production. Wow. Well, that says um, a lot. And, you know, they, Rockstar was the publisher of the original, so they're going back to that. Um, you know, hopefully Remedy's working on something else, too. We both played in, like, Control. Oh, I love that, that be, game. That seems like that has a lot of potential yeah. for, for more spinoffs or sequels. Yeah, yeah. But their, their production value and the creativity of that team is certainly there. So they want to reimagine something. Those people you know. are off their rockers <laughs> after playing country. You want to talk about confusing that, stories? But that game was like, that game like warmed into my brain. Like it was yeah. like, it like deeply psychologically <laughs> Disturbed affected, you? affected me. And just, oh yeah. no. But I, I loved it. I thought it was great. But they um, did say PC, PS5, Xbox Series X and S. So no, no switch. Nary, yeah. nary a cloud. Nary in, a in, cloud. Yeah. Uh, but... Again, I'm glad that um, maybe this is my shot to try it out. I thought this was weird. So I think this was just posted to their um, investor relations site and not like, there was no trailer, there was no, and they're like, oh, this crashed our investor relations site. It's like, why are you posting this only there? Yeah. There was some strangeness about the announcement that, again, only probably stood out to us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Oh, I love this. Yes. Well, why don't you do this one? You're I so, want you're so to. happy. About I'm it. so happy. So Reggie um, tweeted earlier this week that his new book that's coming out in May. Yeah, very soon. Very soon. We're so excited for him. Um, is getting an audio version, and he's the narrator, which yeah. is amazing. Like, I truly miss Reggie's voice. Like, you know, when we used to sit in meetings with him and get to talk to him all the time, like. He just has like a presence, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's going to be super fun to um, to listen to the audio version and just like imagine those times again with Reggie. I think you're stoked to not have to struggle through an actual book. <laughs> that too. <laughs> I'm a big audiobooks person. I Somewhere your ninth grade teacher is sighing deeply. My like honors English <laughs> About teacher. About his or her just I'm failures. I'm sorry, Mrs. Stimson. I wrote those essays. I love the you. The one that got away. <laughs> <laughs> I, um... Because I love like uh, listening to it when I'm on my walk with yeah. the dogs yeah. or like when I'm on a run. It's like so nice. But yeah, now I get to hear Reggie in my head. When this I'm book is run. like we're, we're within a month of this book. I'm, yeah. I'm very excited to um, check this out. Yes. Um, what, are, what are your expectations for this book? I mean, I'm he is incredible. I, I, I know that the book is probably like some parts of it more like business minded. Right. Um, but I'm I'm really looking forward to the personal. I hope that he has put in you know some personal. Do you stories. think you're in this book? I don't think so. <laughs> Let me tell you, the person I hated the most oh, was Krista no. Yang. But I held your glasses, Reggie. <laughs> On the other hand, the other half of Nintendo Minute. <laughs> what if what if what if Reggie? Kid is, Ellis, he was a genius. Hashtag Kidarati. <laughs> I was gonna say, what if Reggie was like, I'm actually part of the Christopia. No, that would never happen. That would never happen. <laughs> How would you know that? I just know. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm just looking forward to it. Like, there's not there's I, I'm like joking, but like I'm, we're not Reggie or on his level at all. But there's not very many of us that are that had worked at Nintendo for so long and came out on the outside. So these stories are like very precious. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I also think it's not going to be just like a straight biography or anything. Exactly. Because he yeah. he would always you know before he left again he had these like business principles that he mm -hmm. would like to talk to us about so i think he's got this material that he's been doing in talks that yeah would be great to have in written form which yeah is very it's, cool. it's actually so super practical right and like just great advice for anyone yeah yeah um yeah. But I do think, you know, if you're going to write a book, you do need to kind of open things up a little bit more yeah. than you have. So I, I do think there will be some cool stories um, about his so time much. at Nintendo. Yeah, too, so. exactly. I love it. Day one. 
Uh, yeah, Reggie, we're ready. Send us the early yeah. review copy, please. And then we're really uh, bringing bringing up the rear here, scraping the barrel. I don't barrel know why these, these Sonic... keep ending up in here. People For someone can't... that dislikes Sonic so much, People why do you keep putting these stories into the news about segment? Sonic. You're you're like a masochist. <laughs> it, this is the news. We have we can't censor the news. Okay, <laughs> it's not fake news. It's I'm not news. making it up. <laughs> I'm not gonna get drunk. Kit, Kit refuses to talk about Sonic. Let's oh, talk about it. Wow. Let's talk oh, about here, it. Here we go. Here we go. It was a big, big uh, opening weekend Sonic for Sonic. Sonic Two movie made sixty-five million dollars in the opening weekend. What do you think the Mario movie is gonna make in the opening weekend? Can I? I just have to say, I am getting irrationally worried about this movie every day that goes by. The Mario movie. I know. I'm really scared for it. Every day that it goes by, and every time I see the, just the. Like outpouring of people's support for the Sonic movie, yeah. I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> but from what I can tell, like from people who like Sonic, they're like, this is actually like a legitimately good movie, which right. I think was the takeaway of the first one too. Exactly. So it's like, okay, great. Like you can do it. You know, obviously, I think Mario is an infinitely better and cooler character who is not lame and and irrelevant. <laughs> your your professional opinion but about it's like, this? I just worry that they are overthinking they're, it. Yes, that's the thing. That's th why there's only there's been yeah. two Sonic movies and, and zero Mario movies. And I think that's that's why this works. It's like they're like, "Oh, it's pretty true to the game." And obviously, you know, they're riffing we on that. We kind of have a bit of a formula. Yes. We have like a a platform to kind of build the the ser this movie yeah. franchise upon. But again, it's like, "Don't don't make up some like way into a movie that is not what people want out of a Mario movie. Yeah. Please, I like Detective Pikachu. Please do not do such a thing where Mario gets inspirited by the voice of Chris Pratt. So I think that's it's why gonna he... be that. Because I just don't I know. I I don't think that they can script around that. Look at my face. I'm I'm so nervous about this. Movie. I know. I know you are. <laughs> I have a very high threshold for terrible movies. What does that mean? Like I you can, can deal with them or you can't? I can. Okay. Very much. Like, I can watch any movie, really, and be like, that was pretty good. That's maybe, that's why I, I thought that the last three Star Wars movies were pretty good. I think all movies this are, though, like, pretty good. Like, this is something I care about so much. I know. And it's been, like, waiting forever for. Yeah. I really it's gonna be a big am not going to make it if this movie sucks. Okay, well, we'll have to see. <laughs> We'll have to see. But I, I think that you are on to something with the overthinking. That's classic Nintendo oh to completely overthink something or to get trapped in a prison of their own making on the IP stuff. Yeah. Like we can't, Mario can't do this. Right. It's not within it's not the IP. It's the not character. true to the character. Yeah. These such and such characters can't do this because so you're going to have to work within yeah. these weird guardrails. I mean, I don't want Mario to get minioned. I mean... You no, know, this, this, we don't want this that. People making this we movie. We don't want also anything minions. bad to happen to Mario. Yeah. Like we don't want him to like you know get violently beat up no. on or something like that. But I just think that creat creatively, because of the IP stuff, they're just going to be like. I'm really getting, all right. We have to. I'm really. Oh great! The next story is also about that. I can't move on. I'm getting <laughs> dismayed. Uh, Sonic Two director says he's open to making. Oh, I made a typo there. That's making okay. a Super Smash Brothers movie. What kind of movie would that be? So when I saw this, when <laughs> I saw this, the premise of this, when I saw this headline, I was like, "You, buddy, keep your hands to yourself." But then it was like, obviously, it's like somebody asked him, and he's like, "Yeah, it'd be your great honor, blah blah blah." So I'm, I'm not mad about this. Actually. Yeah, but obviously, this is like almost an impossibility. Yeah, unless you are keeping it to like strictly Nintendo characters, and then then that's not Super Smash Brothers. Oh, the first Super Smash Brothers. Well, okay, yeah. fine. But Sorry, we can't get Sora into the Super Smash Brothers movie because he's we too busy doing nonsense in this game. Donald Duck <laughs> for Smash. Yeah. So, whatever. Let's let's just let this movie. Let's just move on with our lives. Well, you're gonna have to wait. I need a some few separation from Sonic. I just need a little bit of separation. Can't. One day we are gonna do the story of of why yeah. I am this way One about day. Sonic. But One we're, day. Again, we're still not ready. These two stories have me emotionally distraught. Let's please You're move very on. distraught. Let's we gotta, we gotta move on to questions. Yeah. Questions from you guys. Oh, this will make me feel better. Good. Thank you so much for your questions every week. They're always great. So let's get started. We source them exclusively from our wonderful and beautiful yeah. uh, Patreon members. Yes. Baron Von Jiggly. Great name. Love this name. Um, I am definitely wondering what went on with the handling for arms. Oh, let me tell you, here in the West. In Japan, the marketing and the handling of the game went so much better, so it actually lasted a decent bit. In the West, it just sort of died. Uh, died down heavily after a, 
uh, a bit despite selling well. And on top of that, to this day, people still think motion controls are, requ are a requirement because of how it was advertised. Nintendo even went as far as to cancel the Dark Horse comic that was apparently was finished in terms of writing. Yes. So a couple things here. You're an arms expert. Weirdly, yes. This is the only fighting yeah. game that I'm good at. You are, and no one wants to play. You are game. so good at arms. It really is like, what's happening here? It's like a savant moment. Yeah. An idiot savant moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're totally right. There is some games that um, are marketed a lot different than in Japan than it is here. And there's also some games that like catch on. I feel like in different markets. Why are you getting making well, so, that face? So I, I was a little thrown off by this question because I was like, what did they do in Japan that was so different? I I thought that I don't know, I thought the marketing that we did for it was fine. I didn't think it was necessarily bad. I, I do think we we spent a lot of time talking about like these characters are really cool. Mm -hmm. Is there any way we can share more about them or bring people There's into that world? There's a backstory to these characters that we never really went deep yeah. on. This was around the same time as Overwatch, too. Right. And we were trying to make that connection unsuccessfully. Right. Unsuccessfully. I do think that, there again, some games just have, like, depending on, like, the market, people just are more interested naturally. I think that's that was my point. Okay. Like, sometimes in Japan... They just naturally gravitates towards a certain style or something. But the clowns, like that. <laughs> <laughs> the clowns, you see. <laughs> so that could be part of the reason why it lasted longer in Japan. Also, I think the other thing that sort of weirdly helped arms in Japan were the um, the big like Splatoon competitive scene. Oh. And there's kind of like a weird like connection between the two yeah. where it's like not a super serious like esports kind of game. Yeah. But it had like that sort of fun competition thing. Yeah. And you know, we were in Japan, people were just like sitting on the floor in the streets, like playing Splatoon together. Yeah. And I feel like Arm had like a little snapshot of that phenomenon in Japan as well. Um, obviously not to the same extent as uh as uh, Splatoon. Yeah. Yeah, but here, um, in the U.S., we, we definitely tried to do our best for the game. We we spoke to Mr. Jabuki, who was the director or the producer for the game, and he was amazing and a really good um, showcase of what the game can do. Um, there was definitely confusion around the motion versus the button control. I think that was a big yeah. misstep. I mean, even for us, like that was something that we couldn't get solid information we, on. Yeah, when we'd ask, like, so you can do it. How does that work? Like, don't don't worry about that. Use these motion. They were like, we don't want to. We don't want to yeah. focus on the buttons. And we're like, yeah. no, but people don't want to do the motion. Right, though. right. And that's, <laughs> so. I, don't, I don't know why you wouldn't go out there with like, hey, two, there's two ways to do it. They're yeah, both great. Options. Choose the one you right, like. Right, right, right. So yeah. that's the only thing I can think of that was a real you know, misstep, mm -hmm. but the whole, the whole bigger opportunity around the world and the characters, mm -hmm. there just wasn't anything more yeah. there, which is maybe why I that comic that, book got canceled. I thought the canceled. title of the game was really a miss too. Oh. Give it something more exciting for people to like, like associate with this game or yeah. like be more just, you know, more like, I don't know, have, give it more like drama or something. It right, was like, right, It's kind of right. like arms because your character has really long arms. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but if anyone wants to play arms with me, I'm really good. You are. <laughs> uh, Brooke Obscura. What are some forgotten games from the Wii U that you would like to see get a second chance on Switch? Mm. Um, I actually went back and looked at a list. I don't think like the Metacritic, like top whatever. Yeah. A most lot. of the games are I was going to say, most of the there. games are there. No, there's the stuff people want. There's Wind Waker. Mm -hmm. There's the Twilight Princess um, remaster. Remaster. There's Xenoblade Chronicles X. Um, that would be a good one. That'd be, I don't know why they haven't done that. Um, the one that really stood out to me is Affordable Space Adventures. Oh, my gosh. Which uh, is a game that, that... is such a fun game. We both really loved. And it was one of the few games that really used the gamepad. In a fun way. So I unfortunately have no... I don't think it's possible... Unless you're like completely retooling that game, but I don't think yeah. it would be as fun actually, because it was like yeah. the, you know the game pads like your dashboard of this little. You could spaceship. have someone join you as a multiplayer on their Switch and have their their Switch be the game pad. Or if there was like a phone app that you could yeah you could pair like with that. it somehow. I don't that was know. such a fun game. What a what a ingenious yeah control scheme that was. That that was fantastic. Yeah. Oh my gosh, uh -huh. this question is awesome, and it has a picture associated yes. with it from Captain Alex. 
tell us everything you can about them. So the them he is referring to are the two hired actors that were in uh, one of the Ring Fit Adventure trailers. Um, who are they? How did they get hired? How did no one on the content team <laughs> not realize this trailer was super creepy before it got out to the public? <laughs> I love this um, So people definitely did know that it was creepy. This is one of those things, sometimes these decisions just get made and there's no way out of them. Yeah, you, you're too late. You filmed and yeah. edited the thing. So it was you like, spent the money hiring the yeah, people. Yeah, so it was like, all right, well, we're announcing this game and here's the trailer and here's the creative. And then you say like, oh, this Ew. is weird. And yeah. they say, well, deal with it. Yeah. So yeah. that's the story there. So <laughs> awkward, yeah. though. I mean, there's times where that happens. There was also, you know, the... Um, I'm forgetting the full name, but the Pope, Mr. Action Figure guy when the Wii U was announced, non specific uh, action figure. Yeah. That was another one. It's like, why are we making these sitcom episodes? Yeah. I don't, I don't know what it was the, random to the point of it yeah. not being funny, which was weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. It's weird sometimes these things would happen with enough time where there was an opportunity for input. This was one where there was not. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they, yeah. yeah sometimes you, they just like hand you this thing yeah. that they made like they as in japan yeah and then they'll just be like here you go like this is the global like asset that we're right, using You're right, like, right. it is <laughs> yeah okay so uh um, and no they're not us from an alternative universe no because they're <laughs> horrifying um okay dachshund we learned this we learned person's your name. name yes hopefully that is correct what are your opinions on the shutdown of the meverse have any uh have any fond memories of meverse and experience Mm, um, yeah. I have a very fun memory of when we were doing um, a Metroid uh, Samus Returns video uh -huh. with um, someone from the Treehouse, and I made a "Why can't Metroid crawl?" reference, <laughs> and no that one either, that, that she didn't understand. Either it. she didn't understand it, or she didn't want to acknowledge it. Yeah, so she just just kind of like kept going. <laughs> yeah, and I always make the nice water <laughs> reference. I love that reference. I think it's hilarious. Why can't I Metroid miss, crawl? I miss the Meverse a lot. I do miss the Miiverse. I'm conflicted on Miiverse. It was cool and fun. On the other hand, it felt completely unnecessary. Oh, yeah. A lot of the time. But, like, some of the times people drew those amazing artwork pieces oh my God. in the Miiverse. Those were. And then they would show up in your Splatoon yeah. game. Remember that? Yeah. That, that was, was incredible. Really... There were so many funny memes, like, yeah. memeable moments right. in the Miiverse. I wish there was another way to, like, yeah. do that. But it's like, just think of, like, there's so much that goes into, like, Moderation. Managing and moderating a yeah. social network, that which is really tough. what this was. It was like so ambitious. And because you can like do all that UGC, I, yeah. there was like so many inappropriate things yeah. in there, and so many funny stories about like people that were. Mo they, there was a team in Japan that was moderating. Yeah. This is like, why are Americans so obsessed with these things? Certain things. Certain <laughs> things. We will not mention that on this family fam friendly podcast. Yes. But it's like there was just like this cultural indifference of like the inappropriate things that. Yeah. People, you know, in the U.S. would post to the Miiverse, yeah. like, eye-rolling, but whatever. It really contributes to the whole Wii U experience, though. It did. It really did. <clears throat> this is a long one. Okay. Uh, you want from to paraphrase? Distel. So I'm going to paraphrase, but he's asking about long games, um, how we feel about completing games and games that are replayable. He sort of explains that he grew up in, uh, as he describes it, a low-income household. So he would always gravitate toward games that were very long or had a lot of replay value. Mm -hmm. Um, and he still has kind of carried that into his current mindset as yeah. an adult. So I can understand that. Just sort of wondering, you know, it's, it's obviously an interesting topic. Some people prefer long, replayable games. Other people like to jump around. Mm -hmm. um, where do you land on this? Yeah, I, you know, I am not a completionist. I think that's pretty... Right. Well known, like you know this about me. Like yeah. I, even if I do have a long game that I'm playing, like Elden Ring or a big open world game, I'm not the kind of person that usually goes through to like a hundred percent a game. But I can see where this person is coming from because you might not be able to like buy a game for you know you have long periods of time in between when you can get a new game, so you right. want sort of that value out of it. So it's kind of nice that there are games available like that where you could play it these different ways like for me I play the story and then when I'm done the story I'm kind of done with the game but for somebody um, that wants to get a lot out of something they have the option to like go back and collect all the things or yeah. you know do all that so I think it's good that that, that exists but it's definitely not how I prefer to play yeah. like I'm, yeah. I'm more of like a 
like my perfect game length is like maybe like 10 to 15 hours and then uh, moving on to something new and fresh or yeah. like just a different flavor right, is, right. is what I prefer. Do you wonder if there's something about like the way that younger people experience games and interpret games where, because I remember like even games that were not meant to be long or replayable, like I would just go back and do certain things again and not mm -hmm. feel like bored. Yeah. Or I was like, oh, I'm just doing this fun thing again or I'm trying it a different way. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you become an adult, I don't know if that's a function of having less time or more options. It's like, yeah. uh, I'm getting bored of this or I need to move on. Yeah, yeah. So that's, a, that's an interesting... That's true. Because before, like... You know, you always talked about how you would go back and play like Mario sixty four yes. like all the time, or like I I would go back and play like Super Mario World all the time. Yeah. I mean, I can still do that, right? But, but yeah, it's like now now I feel like too. There's this like weird thing where like you have to be playing the game that everyone is talking about, or else yeah. you'd be like left behind, right? Or like you won't, you can't be like part of the conversation or something. Yeah. So you kind of have to like pace yourself at the same time as mm -hmm. everybody else because of like social media and stuff. So. You could always quit social media. Yeah. You? I could. Do you want? Would you like me to? Delete your accounts? <laughs> no. <laughs> Goodbye, world. Um, okay. In Designer, during the rollout of the Nintendo Switch, an event that really sticks out in my mind was the live reveal on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Do you guys have any behind-the-scenes info on how this collaboration came about? <laughs> so interestingly, yeah. I remember we did this. I can't remember what was in this particular segment. Do you? This must have been so the we announced Switch in January. No, October. Oh, I'm sorry. It was sorry. The earlier the year before. We had that event in January. The, and it uh, came out in March. Right. So the Fallon show was after the event in January, I believe. Okay. So there must have been a one two switch demo in that. I think there was some Zelda stuff. And maybe too. some Zelda yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, you do not look very I, confident I in this at all. I'm, not <laughs> I'm looking at this. you. I'm not confident. Anyhow, in this. Nintendo has a very close relationship yeah. with Jimmy Fallon. You probably see, you know, Reggie Reggie's was been on, on several times. Mr. Miyamoto, Mr. Miyamoto was on. Been on. Sometimes there will just be other. There was that Ariana Grande oh, Labo right. yeah. thing. Yeah, the little classroom instrument stuff. That right, they did. right. Yeah. So you know, I think you know when Nintendo wants to do something kind of with that type of show or reach that kind of audience, that's often a Go yeah, to. and um, Nintendo's pretty good about this. Like, they they used to be very careful about which celebrities um, they would partner with mm -hmm. to make sure that it's someone that has a genuine affinity towards yeah. Nintendo. So Jimmy Jimmy Fallon truly is a gamer, right? And he's obviously done lots of things with Nintendo before, but he he really like loves video games, yeah. so it it is a more natural fit to be yeah. sort of on a show like that versus like some random. He is somebody though. He's not the best player. He'd be a he'd be a flaily <clears throat> wee boxing, wee sports he might boxing be a, player. But he's like very excitable. Yeah. I think that's why. I remember you know? we did something with him a long time ago on the original the punch out. We punch out. Oh. And it was like, all right, these are the motion controls. Here's how you do it. And then he went, Bleh. yeah. He flailed away. It was away. also a Mario game that we did yeah. where he like immediately died. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Don't fall. Enthusiasm. As long as he's, as long as he's having fun. Ride. As long yeah. as he's having fun, doesn't matter. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. This is a. Th Three part question. Okay. Sometimes from Izzy. We're going to do all three. Okay, from Izzy. Izzy, questions for both of you. What have you found most fulfilling about becoming full time content creators? One, what are one or more of the most challenging hurdles that you're most looking forward to getting past? Two, optional bonus questions. We're getting C. that extra credit. How has your background in marketing helped in transitioning over to full time content creation? Wow, this is a very business minded it's a thorough question. Okay, what, are the, what is the most fulfilling thing? Well, the most fulfilling thing, I think, for me is a freedom. Yeah. Like, you know, we, we certainly had more freedom than most at Nintendo, so we can't really complain because we kind of got to do our own thing, which is great. Yeah. But there's still, like, corporate rules and things that you can't do, mm -hmm. you know? And there's, you know, layers of approvals when, when you have a creative idea. Um, there's a lot of politics and process that we don't have to deal with at all anymore because literally the process is like hey you want to do this yes great let's do it <laughs> it's just each other you know yeah. and um yeah we, we we've worked together for so long and we have so much trust that like i'm like i don't even need to know like i know whatever you're doing i'm gonna be fine with and kind of vice versa yeah. so yeah. that part has been like 
so amazing. I'm so happy. I'm so much happier now. <laughs> it feels so good to just the Sunday like, scaries. Be, I don't have it. <laughs> I don't have Sunday scaries. I'm here on Sunday. It's great. Um, yeah, and then yeah, it's, it's just been like amazing to be free. Yeah, you know? I think for me, it's like. You know, it's only two people and we're doing a lot, but there's really no wasted time. Mm-hmm. Whereas like... You didn't like the meetings and so the... many meetings and yeah. so many emails that are just kind of pointless time wasters. Yeah. Like, oh... You just... Answer the same question 15 right. different times. Right, or now you need to sit in, you know, status meeting X that mm-hmm. kind of has nothing to do with you, but you might get asked a question, so you, you also... pay attention. You also need to pay enough t- attention. Yeah. So it's like yeah. there's really no like fat of what we're doing yeah we have a very like tight schedule we film we edit we do all this stuff within this like one week time frame and everyone everyone as in like me and you we just know exactly what each other is doing like pretty much at all times yeah yeah. so nice yeah um what are the challenging hurdles though yeah the hurdles are that we are just reliant on each other and the skills that we have and can i'm the hurdle is that what you're saying yeah, the you're hurdle is you. The hurdle. You're a challenge. Oh no. <laughs> you're a challenge. I'm a force um, of nature. <laughs> you're a force of disruption. Deal, dealing with the Kitarati. <laughs> We're constantly bombarding your social media comments. <laughs> <laughs> to moder- Keep doing that. I have to moderate all of you guys oh, all no. the time. <laughs> mute, 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 mute. <laughs> <laughs> download, download, yeah. download. Just kidding. Um what was the question again? I'm oh, very distracted. The challenges. Oh, the challenges. The challenges. Well, yeah, because we don't have a production team. We just have have to like learn everything on our own. Yeah. Some of the stuff is new to us, you know. So right, I think I agree. It's just like what what is the side of content creation that we didn't have to deal with at Nintendo? There's certainly some things that like we just didn't have to worry about. Yeah. But now we do. Yeah. But we're figuring it out. Yeah, That's and it's the actually good kind of fun too. Yeah. Like it's a it's a challenge where you feel like. Um, you're actually learning and, yeah. and growing your skills, right. which is like pretty right. cool. Someone said, they're like, the, the editing is getting better. I'm like, yes, thank you. I'm figuring it out. Um, and then the bonus question, how's your background in marketing helped? Oh, yeah. It's gone a long way. It's actually really yeah. helped. Like you, you especially like really know your way around how to do social marketing. Like that is different than like posting like, on your Twitter feed. That is not what this is. Posting like, boomer memes? Yeah, it's not the same thing as like you just like have a random thought pop in your head. You're like, I'm gonna tweet through it. Like that is not the same thing as the actual job of social marketing, which is actually like you need a, a true experience and skill set behind. People always like think that social marketing people don't do actual work. They're yeah. so wrong. Yeah. It's, it's almost as annoying as the people that are like, you work at Nintendo, do you just play games all day? It's like, are you working on social media? Do you just like tweet all day? It's like, shut up. <laughs> so that is, I think, one super like useful skill because like you know how to like, you understand these platforms. You like know how to construct a piece of content so that yeah. it works on that platform. Like, you know, it's like a lot of, it's a lot. Yeah, but then there's also like, creating the content but it's also how you get it out there so like yeah. the, the thumbnail or the title and yeah. like we would always love going to a show called vidcon and just We're like nerding out on that stuff yeah. and kind of Looking hearing analytics all right how do you stuff. interpret analytics is really important we did mm-hmm. all that stuff at nintendo so yeah that that's something where fortunately we do feel very confident, confident yeah, yeah. In, in doing um good question great question loomis um hi there is a saying, find a job you're passionate about and you'll never work a day in your life. I'm considering working in the video game industry, but I'm afraid at some point it will be so tiring that I won't be able to play games without thinking about work. What is your experience or thoughts on this? Any advice? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we are scratching the surface on some of the not so fun topics around working in the industry. There are so many great benefits, but what you bring up is actually like, really real you know this idea of how do you separate your work life and your personal life was something that I struggled a lot with at Nintendo where like you just can't turn it off you know like even when you're um playing a game or something like that like you can't help but think about the work part of it so that is that is a very blurry line when um your passion or your hobby also becomes your job um yeah, I think you really have to be, you know, the advice part of it is I think you have to be very cognizant of that kind of you slipping into that 
thing where you just constantly are thinking about it. Be very like realistic with yourself and like try to pull yourself away from it because sometimes I would forget that and it's like, oh, I have not done anything with my personal life for like months, you know? Mm. I've just been working yeah. pretty much and it's not good. Yeah. I think I fortunately didn't have too much friction with this because it's like, all right, well, work a very long day at Nintendo and then, you know, spend my free time playing a video game, which mm-hmm. might have been a Nintendo game, maybe, maybe one that I worked on, but yeah, it's like, well, this is probably what I would be doing with my free time anyway, so yeah. I didn't feel like it was, I mean, that that was probably technically us working more, but it didn't feel that way. It didn't feel like that, but I think you do, you're mentally, you were like not turning that switch off though. The only times where I didn't like that was like when we would do something for Nintendo and it was like, we need to get to point X in this game. We got the game today. Yeah. And if you don't and if get- we film it like we're filming it yeah. tomorrow. If you don't get to this point, you can't do the thing. I strongly dislike that. Yeah. I still have a lot of like, I can't play Smash. I can't play Smash Ultimate. Like I just, I can't do it. Like it just makes me anxious. Okay. Because of my experience on that, working on that game. So, different for everyone. But we just played that last week with a ridiculous controller. On the Kit and Krista show, which is not the Kit and Krista podcast. Watch that great episode. Exactly. I, but I don't play that game in my free time. Mm. Like, ever. I don't touch it. Yeah. Because I'm, like, traumatized from it. Yeah, our approach to that game actually hurt my appreciation of Smash Bros. We should talk about that another time. We, we should. That one's, yeah. a, that one's a kind of a meaty topic. Yeah. But, yeah, it is tough. I, won't, I will not sit here and tell you that, like, it's all fun and, you know, games and cookies all the time oh cookies <laughs> you can have a cookie but you know it's something that you should definitely be aware about aware of and you seem like you are so um i would just say like just be very truthful with yourself yeah. you know uh all right question from, from, from mikey who starts it with this guttural do you think this is like a tim allen like Ooh. Uh? I, oh. I keep forgetting to ask this have you guys considered making a twitch channel oh yeah. i know it would be kind of difficult for you to be present if it's not a co-op game but i would still watch it if it was just one of you streaming oh which one mikey which, which one? one do you want to see it's hashtag, me, huh? Kidder, hashtag kidderati it's me huh um, i know it's me streaming <laughs> is something we need to figure out yeah. how to do because we don't know yeah to put it very plainly but we want to yes that's like an expansion thing yes for sure. next step is going to be guests mm-hmm. we're going to get some guests I'm pronouncing it very carefully. Yes. Then, hopefully, um, and, and, you know, then we can, you know, stream games, stream reactions, mm-hmm. all sorts of stuff. Yes. We do want to do that. Yes. Actually. Pool. 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 I see so much console warrior stuff every day on social media, especially PlayStation Xbox fans <laughs> going at each other, but also Nintendo fans. I was just wondering, why do you think people tie themselves so closely to a console brand? that they feel the need to go after the competition. And when do they grow out of it? <laughs> are you assuming that these people are like 12 years old and have nothing better to do that's than actually, That's that, probably true. That's actually. actually how I do look at it. Yeah. Because I, I was in this mindset. This led to my Sonic issues yeah. very much. So Sega does what Nintendo don't. The, the Sega Nintendo uh, console yeah, quote, yeah, wars. Yeah. I, and I do see, you know, when I see something like this or I see people like acting weirdly on social media i often have to remind myself like this person might be like 11 mm-hmm. um and not just assume that you they know we're all on the picture. same level of maturity or life experiences yeah. and yeah. you know it's not you know an excuse for bad behavior but right. it is easy to get trapped in a mindset like that where mm-hmm. it's like well maybe i had you know i had to work for this 500 dollars and i had to choose this console and i'm so like deep in that decision that yeah that I and I, I will not let my mind be changed that I made the wrong decision. That's true. So I'm gonna yeah. actually talk down on the other yeah. thing I'm gonna to make myself, myself feel better. Yeah. That's that's that could be very true. And I think that, you know, social media really feeds all of this too yeah. because it makes it so easy for you to do right. that and get the response <laughs> yeah. that um that you're probably seeking. Right. 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 So it just makes it like you know, so much easier to have this like kind of yeah, argument. yeah, and obviously, um, you know, a lot of people grow out of this. Yeah. Um, if you know, <laughs> full grown adults who don't grow out of this, like, eh, this may be not the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe you should like rethink some of your priorities or yeah, whatever. But yeah. yeah, I mean, that was that was absolutely when I kind of grew out of it. Was like when I 
you know, got into college and mm -hmm. kind of, again, you get exposed to more things. Yeah, and, and you meet, you meet have, people in real life that have different have, likes and dislikes. Right, you have more access to, to, you know, these other systems in this case, and mm -hmm. you can appreciate them. Exactly, better, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, Prince Charmless, question for Krista, that's me. If Nintendo decides to make a Zelda movie, which adaptation would you like to see? Link's Awakening, Majora's Mask, not Majora's Mask. Twilight Princess or a brand new story? Why is this just a, st a question for you? He doesn't like you. Christopian loyalist. I'm just going to zip it for the rest of this episode then. <laughs> just the for silent, this I'm going to give you the silent treatment Don't for the next to 20 to, to, to 30 minutes. Give it to him. He doesn't deserve it. You do. Why? It's you're not my fault. You're here. I didn't ask myself the question. You're giving me a <laughs> smug look. <laughs> you need to like punch it out of me with a boxing match? No? All right. Let's see, let's see what you can do. Um, let's see. You know, I actually quite like the story setup from uh, Breath of the Wild, like this sort of a hundred years before the events of Hyrule story. Um, so that might be fun to to do a movie on that. I'm just trying to think of like what Zelda game has the richest narrative that would be good. I'm gonna break my silence to, to say tell. This. Link gets taken over by a zany ghost voiced by Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> And that's where things well, really Link get fun. Well, Link can talk. Oh my gosh. We, we, I mean, we talk about Nintendo overthinking it. The Link talking thing. Will be an overthought. In a movie. They would, I mean, it would be like, what would happen? I don't even know. Like, it would be so Will Link fun. ever talk in a video game? Ever? Probably not. It's against the IP now. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Um, but that, that would be great. That would be a great story. I think, you know, if, if you're making a movie, you're... you're presumably introducing this to a lot of new people. I think you yeah. need something that just sets, sets it up sets it up the best yeah. possible way. Or even um, Skyward Sword. That's a good movie. That's a good a setup. So yeah, I, I think I think a lot of these could work. Again, I think Majora's Mask is maybe too niche. That's the one that's going like, to get confusing. Like that could, be a, that could be a sequel TikTok, down yeah. the road. But um, mm -hmm. Link's Awakening is tough because I think anytime you have time travel in a movie, it's really yeah. difficult and yeah. people get lost. Um, Although it seems like every movie these days has a multiverse. <laughs> this is the, the Link yeah, multi so maybe, the Zelda multiverse. Yeah, maybe by yeah. the time this happens, people will be into it. Uh, okay, next question. From Riven. What is your final fan final what is, oh boy. Blah, 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 blah. What is your favorite Final Fantasy game and why is it six? Um I like six quite a bit. I like six a lot too. But I like four better. You like four yeah. better. I think six is mine. I, I'm not I don't know why. But seven. I thought you liked seven. I like best. seven too. Yeah. I like six and seven. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like don't know why. I like four and just, six. I just like it. I liked of the newer ones I liked, and I'm trying to do the math. Twelve was one I liked that was newer that I like quite a bit. Um Twelve. It's uh anyhow. Okay. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Yeah. For both Kit and Krista, if you were to pick one game to start speed running, which would it be? You doing speed running? I'm so bad at speed running. <laughs> um, I, I don't think I would want to be a speed runner because it it's, looks it's, so hard. It's one of those things where like, you screw up one little thing and you, gotta, you know, start, start over. start over. I do think, you know, you talked about me playing Mario 64. Do you think time. you can speedrun that? Well, I think that was kind of how I approached it when I was just playing this again and again. Is like, what's a different way to get through this? Or what's mm. a new route? Or what's a different move to use? I feel like a game like that could be fun to try and find those new like paths. alternate paths. Versus just banging your head of like, how can I shave point oh 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 one seconds oh, off this yeah. run? How can yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So something that gives you more creativity, I think. Yeah. that That's a good way of looking at speedrunning in a, in a different way. Right. Yeah. I, I'm so... Bad. I feel like speed running, although I did see some video of someone speed speed ran mm, Elden Ring in like 13 minutes or something oh, like that. I'm going to start watching those. That was crazy. <laughs> I'll okay? get spoiled, but I also don't care. Yeah, but it's like, I, so for some reason, I always think speed running is for like platforming and I'm so bad at platforming that I like cannot even fathom trying to speed run it because yeah. I would just die immediately. Right? But um, I guess if you could speed run like a game like Elden Ring, it might be more fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. It's hard. Uh, our last question. From your jury. Oh, this is a question oh, for, for you. me. But there's a reason. I will be silent. There is a reason. I'm going to give you the As a former silence. Konami employee. Are you a former Konami employee? No. What was your personal reaction to the optics of the Konami and Kojima situation? The, his departure, the Game Awards attendance ban, etc. And do you have any thoughts on what could have or should have been done differently to handle it? 
Well, it all came down to a day when he had a bad board meeting and met with Game <laughs> Pro Magazine. Um, no. So this was really, you know, two groups, you know, part of the same company. Two groups, though, going in different directions. Yeah. You know, Konami really started to contract its gaming business. For the Pachinko Parlors. At a time when he wanted to go bigger than ever before. Yeah. And again, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Like, his vision is very clear. Yeah. And he really wants to do things his way. Right. And I think there was also friction around every time he made a Metal Gear game, he would, he would say, like, this is the last one. I want to do something new. Yeah. And I think those were the handcuffs that he was given mm-hmm. was, yeah. you, you want this fat budget? Make more Metal You're Gear You're making game. this sure thing. Yeah. And that must be hard. Yeah. And I think it was just all of these that. things layered together where, you know, again, I, you know, Konami, like, barely makes games now. So yeah. they may have just been like, yeah, we don't want to pay this. Like, maybe if you scale this budget back or yeah. do it this way. And he was probably like, I don't need this. I, you know, I've got the creative side down. I'm making yeah. hits. Um, yeah. I'm out. So, you know, he was... I think he made the right decision for himself, for sure. You know, his role at Konami was much more than just, you know, a rank-and-file developer. Like, he was very entrenched in the business overall. Right. Like he's very That's much probably like, why he was at the board meeting. Yeah, he's like a Mr. Miyamoto, <laughs> yeah. where it's like, he does that, but he is also, like, yeah. part of these... It's always weird to think about these creative Management. In, in that role. Yeah. Because I'm like, that must be terrible for you. Right, right. Like, I would not want that. Yeah, so it's a bummer, but, you know, he's yeah. he's doing his own thing, and Konami's doing the pachinko. Yeah, and I think he's doing great. The yeah. pachinko's kind of a bummer. Not the pachinko. I'd like I some mean, Konami. I mean, uh, Kojima-san yeah. doing his own right. thing is kind of great. Right. Like I, I, I You love Death Stranding. You loved it. I, I commend anyone that <laughs> goes out for their freedom. Do it, people. Be free. <laughs> uh, okay, that's it. That is the questions uh, with the, the que- With the questions. Yeah, we got to do the graduation Ooh, thought ceremony. thought you were going to... Just steamroll past our, our beautiful and talented Never. Club members. I was going to say that someone made a great, uh, co- left a great comment and said, when we read the names, it's yeah. like a graduation ceremony. So I'm going to I'm gonna make it more so like a graduation ceremony. Great. More than ever. Let the commencement begin. There's more One Up Club members than ever. Oh. Hopefully you've, you've been practicing. Let me just. In the mirror. <clears throat> clear my throat. Get ready for this. All right. Here we go. Aaron Burgundy. Aaron Hash. Astic. Ace Tick. Oh <laughs> Adam Edwards. <laughs> Ajan Malari. Ali Shah. Angela Bycroft. Ben E. Bettina Tsang. Blue Toad. Brian Humphreys. Chancellor Fairley. Christopher Lay. Captain Alex. Daniel Cold. Doxon. Derek. David Zek. Dispel. Douglas Chomix. Drew Grant. Ed Sandwich. <laughs> Eganverse. Eric. S Parts 50. Fair. Gar. Garrett Hallfish. Handsome Warrior. Ian Xie. Oh, you did it. Uh, Israel Izzy. Jackie Z. Jack1999. James Cabral. Jason E. JBJ. Jeff Yochum. Jeremy Omaker. Jim Wakeland. Joe Burnt. John Responte. Jonathan Rowe. Jordan Collette. Jordan Hemmerley. Jordan Thomas. Jordy Kirk. Wow. Huh. <laughs> so many Jordans. <laughs> Just Camtro. Carter with a K. Kawa 2796. Kevin. Kevin Delane. Kyle Kretzer. Kyler Nelson. Linked Triforce. Luminous. Lucas Pico. Luis. Luis Calcano. Michael Cravens. Michael Mazor. Mike Chin. Mikey. Nick Waterman. Nod Narb. Oscar Peterson. Patreon user. <laughs> Paul Gale Network. Oh, here we go. Pirates TCG grudges forever. Pirates TCG ramming speed. Prince Charmless. Reaver. Rain Tech. Raphael. Rob Osborne. Rocks. Roy Eskey. Eskey, sorry. Ryan Stokes. Sam Nealand. Shinryu. Slow Bro. Sparkling Salt. Spicy Munchkin. Starholt Productions. Steel Citron. The Don Rob. Thomas. Thomas Alvarez. Tony Khalil Rogers. Tugs Puppy Bear. Taylor Guise. VGM Life. Video Game Stupid. Beautiful Dandy. Virtual Bot. What's up, Flapjack? Zoof. I think you had a couple of gaffes there. But I'll let them correct you in the Discord. What are the far, gaffes? Far be it from me what to are overstep. The gaffes? What are the gaffes? That's your responsibility. I think I did pretty good this time. But we did it. 
I think I did pretty good. Okay. Graduation over. Everyone move your tassels to one side and throw your caps uh, in the air. That's uh, almost another perfect episode in the books. Is it though? <laughs> well, for one of us at least. Oh, no. Hashtag Kidarati. Hey, uh, stop trying to promote your personal Why? gain. Stop it. My gain is your gain. That's how this works. It is. It, it is. You're trying to drive a wedge <laughs> between a, us. I got a solo album coming out. <laughs> <laughs> this is my Gwen Stefani moment. Oh no! But no doubt was so much better uh, than Gwen Stefani. But, but Gwen Stefani got rich. <laughs> oh, she was a rich. Anyhow, you need that paper. You're not done. Not, I'm done. I don't done. need it. Okay. I don't need it. That's a show, everyone. That is. By show, I mean podcast because the show <sighs> is different. Don't forget to check out. The Kit and Krista Show, different from the podcast, on Fridays if you're not a Patreon member. But if you are and you want to join our beautiful Patreon family, which is patreon.com slash Kit and Krista, you get both the podcast and the show early, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. And lots of other bonuses yes. like Q&As, behind the scenes videos. Uh, we're doing our first One Up Club in a, um, virtual yes. event in a few weeks. Right. Thank you all very for fun. responding to the, the polls, by the way. And um, we'll be going through that and picking the best time. There's a lot of stuff that happens on Patreon that people might so not much. see. Yeah, a lot of stuff that happens on Patreon. A lot of stuff that happens on Discord. And the Discord is so see. fun. You won't see unless you join. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Discord is very fun. We, we're very active in the Discord with all of you, which is my favorite part of the week, really, just to hang out on Discord together. Um, so join us. I, I hope that if you're considering, um, check, check it out. Check out all the different tiers and find one that's good for you. Um, don't forget to follow us, youtube.com slash kittencrista, the, the place you are watching this video on right now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, do all the things. We are also on other social media channels, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok slash kittencrista. So come and hang out there. Um, this week, the, 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 or yesterday, the fun thing that happened on Twitter was someone photoshopped a Sonic game into your hand. Oh. Which was maybe the best moment of deep my Saturday. Deep fakes. There's been deep fakes on been Twitter. Been deep faked. So sign up for that kind of wonderful content. Um, yeah. I think I did what it. What else? I did it. Good. We're done. No plug for the Christopians? Let's see how much you can. I don't, you know what? I don't need to plug it because they're, they're here. They're neglected as well. On force. Are. Everyone will learn okay. to do a cartwheel. <laughs> You're a oh no. <laughs> Let's do it. 500 people doing a cartwheel would be pretty cool. Flash mom. Um, all right, we're going to wrap it up for today. We will see you later. Bye. Bye.